just a backseat driver flying on the cover. A nice suit and a family name says he'll make me a star if I just play the game. That man doesn't know that I. Aviation action for the next few hours. Apologies for the slightly late start. We were just letting a bit of weather pass through. It's, uh, it's definitely trying to soak us today, guys. Oh, but we're yes. here. There's going to be spray and planes. Going to be mega. Absolutely mega. And, uh, we got a guest with us today. Who is it? Matt Smith. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? You alright? Alright. How you doing? Hello. Buzzing, buzzing. We got Captain Mark with us today, guys, as well, keeping us company. We're going to be having a chill one. We're going to be sharing it with, a bit with Matty Smith, and we've got, got all the old squad here today, haven't we? And uh, we're going to be taking a few pictures, plenty of pictures. Um, I think we kind of said that we don't mind if we get a little bit of rain, just so that we get a bit of spray on the runway. Um, but we're hoping for the most part that it does stay off. There are rumours of thunder, but that never seems to materialise at Manchester. But as with always, if it does start trying to kill us, we will come inside for a minute. Don't worry, chat. Yeah. It's a funny man. No, you can go up there and have I'll a doctor if you want. I'll have a go. <laughs> I'll have a go. Hey, well, welcome in, guys. Hope you're doing well. Hope your week is going well so far. In a big metal container type thing here. I mean, big metal things do get struck by lightning, don't they? They do, yes. Yeah, Mark will know about that one. Yeah. Oh, there's a CB in the vicinity. That's interesting. Up on the forecast. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Welcome to the midweek evening show here. Bit of a change of weather from what we're used to here. It's usually, uh, the last few shows have been quite nice. Oh, Mark's just showing me a, a touch of yeah. red that's uh, in between Sale and uh, Rochdale. Yeah. Ah. North east of the airport. It's not too far away. Just from a visual point of view, the clouds do look a bit nasty today. So yeah, tune in for uh, what will be potential storms during today's show. Most likely rain. John, can you look after the heart, please? Can you get rid of the heart, son? Oh yeah. Coming in from Sunny Dallaman is this 2E737 Max 8. I'm still situating here. Stand by chats. And yeah, we've got Captain Mark with us today. For those who don't know him, I mean, I'm sure most of you do by now. 
uh, most people even know where he is at any given time these days in the VIP lounge anyway. Yeah, what's funny is Mark's wife in the VIP lounge <laughs> uses our VIP lounge to see what Mark's up to because we <laughs> seem to know more than she does half the time. So. Our community seems to keep tabs on where he's going and and uh, how many orbits he's done at this airport and all sorts. Yeah. It's good, it's been stalked, but you know, it's, it's not dangerous, it's great, it's great fun. Yeah, the wife loves it. Do you want to introduce what you do, I guess? Um, um, yeah, hello, I'm Captain Mark, <laughs> uh, I'm an Airbus captain here at Manchester, and uh, I come on the stream from time to time to say hello and answer any questions anyone's got, and... Uh, and you also I, do our Pilot Explain series. I do your series. Pilot Explain series as well, and uh, we've got another one coming out very soon once Andy edits it. We have. That was good fun. Indeed. Yeah, so make sure you're following the Airliners Lounge channel for those videos, guys. That's where all of them are going to be. And uh, if you do have any questions um, pilot-related or anything like that, get them in the chat. Let us know. We'll make sure uh, we try and get you an answer. This uh, aircraft named Menorca. To be one of them fleets that they like to name their aircraft. Uh, I know like Jatu do it as well. Uh, obviously some of the flag carriers do it as well. Uh, probably, probably the most iconic here at Manchester are the names of the Virgin Atlantic aircraft, which I believe we have two A350s based here at Manchester now with Virgin. Really nice to see. Have you seen them out and about, Mark? I your... have, yeah. Yeah, I saw uh, V-Bob the other day for the first time when I was waiting for me delayed flight. That's what I want to see. I want to get yeah, a good picture of nice that. And shiny. It's funny, actually, that one's called Menorca. That's where I'm supposed to be going tomorrow. All right. But, uh, six o'clock in the morning, whenever. That'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, welcome to everyone saying hello in the chat. Thanks, guys. Belgium saying delivery's just arrived right on the limit of slot time. I've, I'll be very patient and unpack it later, says Belgius. <laughs> no worries, dude. And lots of people have been receiving their travel wallets as well. For anyone who has received theirs yet, let us know in the chat. Are you happy with it, guys? Hope you are. And uh, Sandra, brand new Airliners Live VIP member. Cheers, Sandra. Welcome in. I'll give you a little, uh, little bing bong. There you go. Oh, no, well, it's muted. see the uh, travel wallet's actually been it's on the screen at the moment oh, and, uh, good, I've got good, a little good. video put up in the VIP lounge actually of my um, my daughters when I uh, got home from, oh yeah yeah I, I got, pulled them out for them uh -huh. and said look I've got these and they sort of look at them what's this and I said you know you wanted something to put your passports in before you go on your first holiday ever and then one of them jumps up and runs out of the kitchen to get a passport and they're, they're all quite excited mega. <laughs> it's, it's yeah. absolutely yeah. mega but so yeah you, they're lovely it's your kids first time going abroad yeah Yep. How old are they now? Uh, 11 and 13, the little ones, and the oldest, 23. She's been abroad before. And the uh, wife, the wife's first go as well. Have they all been asking for it, or did you propose the idea? Or uh, they've they've asked for it for a while, and uh, yeah. yeah, we've we've. Yeah, we're going in. We're going off to Palmer in October, so that'll be nice for are three you, nights. Um, are you allowed to fly your own family to the destination? Oh if you my gosh! To? Imagine uh, that. I am. Yeah. yeah. I don't know uh, if there's any sort of like, I don't like. Not conflict of interest, but no. any sort of thing that stops that. No, I mean, we had one the other day, the first officer, he was going, we were going then to uh, Murthia, and the new Murthia, and his parents and his sister were on board, and they had no idea he'd actually swapped on the flight. Yeah. So we were trying to arrange it so he could get off the plane, go around the back, walk up behind them, but we couldn't because they would have seen him. So we actually got the cabin manager to put an announcement out, asking them to come forward, there's a problem, you know, that they need to deal with. And the three of them come wandering up and he walks out of the flight. <laughs> <So> <laughs> That's it was, awesome. It was pretty cool. Awesome. Sandra, there's your bing bong. Thank you very much for becoming a brand new VIP on the channel. Really appreciate mm. that. Jamie Morrison is saying, never been on a plane before, but too scared to try. So, if you go on the Airlines Lounge, have a look at the Pilot Explains series, have a look at the uh, Airline Pilot Debunks the Eight Fears of Flying, that might help you. Um, I've had a few people come up to me and say that's really helped them. Yeah, yeah. links will be in the chat. Yeah, if a mod could uh, link the Fear of Flying, or Flying Fears, Eight Flying Fears video that we did. Uh, Matt in, Smith's on it. I can see his thumbs absolutely <laughs> rapid. <laughs> Matt, Matt is a bit of a super mod, isn't he? Yeah. And uh, Paul tuning in from Detroit, Michigan. Thank you, Paul. Uh, saying looking forward to another awesome show. Loving the late Wednesday time slot across the pond. Yeah, I know a lot of you guys are really, uh, really loving this time slot. If only we could keep it, guys. But unfortunately, it will be coming to an end in September. But uh, we'll be making the most of it. 
until then. Um, a massive thanks to Sasha for sending in a £10 donation, saying hello Martin, Andy, Matt and Mark. Uh, I've been looking forward to today's stream and I'm sat on the sofa chilling, just a little bit hung after, hung over after my birthday yesterday. Hey Sasha, I hope you had a great day Aww. yesterday. Hope you had a, a really nice day and something nice for your tea as well. And uh, Mr. Brownbill, I don't know who he is, just returned for 31 months. What an absolute legend, as if like 50-50 channel owner can't give himself a free membership. <laughs> Welcome to YouTube. Welcome to YouTube, yep. Um, but... Uh, Thank you very much for tuning in, guys. And Barry Bidwell saying, uh, Christmas has arrived early. I received my A380s today. We'll post pictures in the lounge in due course, as usual, and nothing is easy. Uh, we'll email, says Barry. Okie dokie. I am not sure what A380... Oh, you, right, okay. What? Okay, is there an issue with it, Barry? Oh, please don't say it's arrived, arrived damaged. Let me know. Um... Let me scroll back through some messages that we've we've missed. Uh, BC saying, going to be lurking today. Uh, unfortunately, we had to let Salem go yesterday, uh, but love watching and supporting Airliners Live. Well, BC, like I say, sit back and try and enjoy the streams, mate. The whole community is here for you as well. And um, like I say, just, just sit back and have the show on in the background if that helps you, mate. This EasyJet off to Rhodes now, which is now lined up on 2-3 right. It looks like they're on to single runway ops. Oh, just in time. Yeah, which I think starts these days at about 4 p.m., so... Perfect. Which has been pretty useful for us here on the uh, evening shows. And Beastie just gifted an Airliners Live membership as well. Thank you very, very much for that. Oh, thanks, Beastie. Oh. Very kind of you. And Seb with a 199 saying, I've just ordered a lanyard. What? They're back in stock now, are they? What? What? I've got mine. Oh. Matt's and got his now. If you see the new video when it comes out, I'll be wearing it. There you go. Whoa. Yes. For anyone wondering, the last, and I mean the last order of lanyard is now live on the website. We have, however, held some stock back exclusively for the task fair, so... Just bear that in mind, but if you do need yours delivered, um, they're now live on the website, along with the travel books and two brand new little items, guys, which you may like. So go and have a look. Let us know your thoughts and feelings on those. And um, there's a question coming in saying, how many... Uh, who, who was it who asked? I think it was Gillian. Uh, said, how many flying hours do you have under your belt now, Mark? Too many? Over 11,000. 11,000? 11, <laughs> I, I stopped counting years ago. That I've got an electronic log, but it just downloads it all automatically. Does, but does that include? Is that all commercial? Is that or is that on a certain? That's everything. Yeah, everything. Um, I mean, I instructed for three and a half years. Did eighteen hundred hours then. Um, but yeah, the rest is all commercial. Well, yeah, apart from the PPL and the hundred hours hour build, he went up a bit steep there. Yeah? Oh yeah. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's all it's all commercial. It's, uh, on the 7.5? No, three and a half years I did in the 7.5, so it's about 2,000 hours. Uh, about 900 on the 7.3, which is 900 too much, and the rest is all on the bus, <laughs> which, you know, obviously I'll tolerate. <laughs> and what Airbuses can you fly? Is it... Uh, when you learn one, do you learn more than one because it's Airbus, or how do yeah, you Yeah, I mean, I'm rated on 319, 320, 321. Um, if I wanted to fly the 321, I'd have to do, I think it's, you know, some, some an online exam and a check with an instructor. Oh, right. um, it's just slight differences. If I wanted to fly something bigger, like a 330, um, it would be a, a, like a differences course rather than a complete type rate. Mm. Uh, even the 380, you know, it's it's a different. You know, uh, most airlines, if you go on a 380, will give you a full type rating. But if you um, you know went in the flight deck, every you know where, you know where everything is and everything makes sense and everything looks the same. So you know you can work your way around it quite quickly. Okay, orders are literally making my phone vibrate itself off the desk, guys. So they're <laughs> selling pretty fast. How many people in the world have not got an Airliners Live lanyard yet? I am curious because they keep selling. I know, we keep thinking this We're is... Like, oh, this these is... are going to take ages to sell now. Everyone's surely got one. Apparently not. <laughs> Nicole Peters, thank you very much for the 19 months. Hello, welcome in. Thank you very much for supporting the stream 
for a very long time, 19 months now. And uh, Yorkshire Rose saying uh, she's going to be watching on Catch Up. Uh, she's off to watch the grandson in a school play shortly. Nice one. I hope that goes well. Enjoy. And uh, Ian Fairburn saying just ordered a second lanyard as my grandson desperately wanted one after seeing mine. Listen, I wonder how many people are ordering these. They're going to be whacking them on eBay at Dribble of Rye soon. <laughs> So this Logan at ATR looks like it's entering it. I think it's Mike 1, that intersection. And it's only heading to Aberdeen. And yeah, much like quick. the uh, A320, yeah, it won't, it won't be on the ground very long. So you type rated for an A321. Yeah. With a little course. What if you wanted to go to an LR and, and fly or the across XLR? the pond? Like, yeah. is... Is that still the same course, or is it different because you're doing transatlantic flight? Yeah, uh, the actual aircraft operates the same. Um, it's The flight deck's exactly the same. Yeah. What you'd have to do is you'd have to do a bit more. I mean, we do a bit of HF stuff, oceanic routes, you know, down to the Tanga routes, down to the Canaries and up to Iceland. But you'd have to do, you know, the, the, the stuff across the pond, the oceanic, and, you know, the... the the point of no return calculations, all that sort of stuff. So there, there's more to it, but that would be airline specific rather than the aircraft type. Right. So that would be all down to them. So you can still kind of just go on and do it just with a little bit of a little bit of a course, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, I, I, they, the, the, the airline, the airline would do you a couple of days in the classroom to make sure you're up to speed and all of right. that. Right. Yeah. And you'd probably again have to, you'd have to have a, you know, you'd have to change airlines to do it. So you'd have to have a line check and some training and. Pass their LPC, OPCs, and all the sim exams as well. So it's it's a bit, you know, it's not just a case of stepping in the aircraft and doing it because it would be a different airline. They've got different procedures. Hello, it, okay? it definitely seems like the A320 is a good aircraft to be type rated on these days if you were looking to yeah, get into long call because okay? that seems like it's increasing. I think in in demand. Yeah, um, obviously with the XLR coming out as well, which is going to have a, a bonkers range. I'm not sure the exact numbers on that. I know the uh, LR is like four and a half thousand nautical miles, which uh, or four thousand on uh, the standard LR. I think there's a, a extra fuel tank option, um, which can get you from well Manchester to Toronto, Manchester to New York, as you see in here at Manchester with yeah. the Aer Lingus and Air Transat and things. Yeah. And uh, G some B on the pushback apparently, so we get to see that. Lovely. Yeah, Mark, you did mention about a new aircraft in the Jetu fleet. Yeah, Sun Seas in Manchester, I think, came in yesterday. So I think it's parked up over by STS at the moment. It's waiting for its stickers to be put on, its seats to be put in. Nice. Um, I did see a picture of the interior with all the mood lightning. It looked quite quite saucy. Ooh. So that'll be uh, that'll be out and about soon. We've got a, uh, a holiday booked with Jetu next month. And I think we're on a 7.5 because that's 42 rows on the seat oh. map. But, you know... I, I, I prefer the 7.5, but I think if we were to get downgraded for whatever reason, maybe the Neo could be an option there. But I think... Mate, just don't go. <laughs> if you take the 7.5 off, you just say you want a refund. <laughs> yeah, I'd say, yeah. Reason for <laughs> refund, no 7.57. Seven. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because um, I think... On the, I don't know about you, Mark, but do you find that the Neo is a bit more comfortable on, on the longer flights, or do you not notice a difference? Because for me, I notice, like, the pressurization is sometimes a bit better, and... We, I, I've not noticed anything like that. I know it's, you know, it's quiet. I mean, I was in the 319 the other day, which pleased me immensely. But on takeoff, I thought, dear, oh dear, this is quite noisy. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the active noise cancelling headsets, but I always leave it off for takeoff so I can hear everything that's going on. Right. There's, you know, I don't want to hear, any, you know, any any burbles or farts out the engine. I want to hear it. Mm -hmm. yeah, the noise cancelling, the, the the Bose headsets, the the uh, eight. The A20, I think, is the over ear one. That really does block the sound out very, very well. But I've got the Pro Flight, and you can still hear pretty well, but I always leave it off for um, takeoff and normally for landing as well, just just so I can hear everything that's going on. Yeah, I had a. Uh, I've got Bose QC noise cancelling headphones, and I had them in, in the office. Had some banging tunes on, thanks to Val Dudes, the main man, and uh, I was dancing away in the office doing my stuff, and there was an Amazon guy stood right at the door watching me, <laughs> and uh, he shouted me about two or three times before I realised he was even right there. So. <laughs> Uh, dear. It didn't help that Val Dudes tends to DJ with his top off as well, which made me look uh, very sus in the office. <laughs> 
my uh, my <laughs> evening entertainment. There you go, chat. Uh, Barry Jones, thank you very much for gifting an Airliners Live membership. That's gone to Flying Finn. Thank you very much, Barry Jones. Very exactly. kind of you, mate. There is a question in the chat from Andrew uh, Greenall saying, uh, how long would it take to swap your license from Airbus to Boeing, basically? You'd have to do a complete type rating if you didn't already have the Boeing on your license. Um, obviously, I had the 75 and the 73 on, but that's lapsed now, so I'd have to do the complete type rating again. So it'd probably be three or four weeks in a classroom and three weeks in the simulator and then a couple of weeks of line training with trainers and then a check ride at the end of it. Uh, test two couple of tests at the end of the simulator, so you know it'd be it'd be a few months. Um, wow, if you, and and oh, I suppose it depend on the airline, wouldn't it? Whether you have to cover that cost or or they might they might cover the cost themselves. The yeah, training. I mean generally, if you're you're going from um, an airline to airline and you're qualified and you're type rated, chances are they'll pay for your type rating. It's, it's it's normally the new guys who are coming through the cadets and that who have to pay for the type ratings, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot. There's a few lads I know are off to Emirates. Um, Emirates is paying for all their training. Without, you know, that that's a given. Yeah. Um, a couple of my mates have gone to Jet Two. Jet Two paid for all the type. You know, the, the conversion. I mean, they were already Airbus rated anyway, but there was a conversion to do. There was their license proficiency checks to do, and a few other sims. You know, the line training. But Jet Two covers that. Yeah. It's 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 very unusual if you're coming off, uh, you know, a reasonable sized jet to a similar jet to have to pay for your own type rating some some airlines if you're coming off turbo props onto a jet they might make you pay for it but um yeah it's normally the cadets who have to put their hand in their pockets yeah i mean we've seen a few companies start to do uh the sort of sponsorship schemes and stuff but i think we mentioned when Feza was trying out for it, the 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 questions and the entry exam and stuff like that is is so difficult yeah. that it seems like they're trying to sort of handpick the very best rather than literally just get the pilots in and get them flying which i mean i guess is what you want if you're going to be paying for them yourself but um it, it was a bit of a shame to me to see sort of how difficult they'd made it i must admit yeah it's not uh, you know they're going to be stumping up an awful lot of money for these guys and they want to make sure they've got got the right people doing it exactly but, uh, yeah yeah, I know I've seen some of the questions and what they've got to do with flying is beyond me, but there you are, it's not my train. So. Yeah, that's massive. And Greg tuning in from New York State. Thank you very much, Greg, saying have a great one, gents. Awesome show as usual. Uh, I really dig this time slot. Uh, keep up the good work and I look forward to every Airliners Live production. Hey, cheers, Greg. Thank you very much, mate. Uh, I've got a good question here from Lords Who Travel. Um, is there a way to see when a plane is pressurised? Um, apparently it was mentioned ages ago um, but uh, he didn't catch it um, there's not really I mean on the ground the aircraft isn't pressurised if you I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the back of this 7th I think it's on the other side but there's a, a little door on the back that opens a little flap door it's on the back of the Airbus um, under the uh, tail and I think I can see that from here yeah can you can you I don't know if there you can see uh, yeah. got it yep you got it on I mean, just, just behind the, 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 the rear the island, exit yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's um, there's uh, a, a double uh, little door. It's, it's got three motors driving it. And what happens on the ground, the plane's completely unpressurised. And as you start your takeoff roll, it starts to pressurise the plane a little bit. So it makes the transition in a flight smoother. So it pressurises it, I think, to about 100, 200 feet on the takeoff roll. And then when you get airborne, it then starts to pressurise the plane. And it's got a schedule. Now, it's quite, it, it, it's got a bit too weak. Yeah, it's on the other side. Um, if you decide to return, oh, uh, no, that, that what you zoomed in is the APU inlet. Um, it's below that. I'm just catching it because there's a delay. That's the actual APU door. Oh, right, okay. So it's, yeah, it's, it's the outflow valve. I think I've seen them. Yeah, it's called the outflow valve. You see it quite clearly on the Airbus. I was going to say the um, Airbus is more noticeable. Yeah, on the, uh, on the other side at the, at the bottom below that. Yep. I do wonder as well if he was talking about hydraulic pressurization. A way that you would see that, if that's what you're asking, on the uh, ground would be right, yes. the usually we see it quite a lot on the 380. Is yeah. the uh, the tail will um, will be in the direction of the wind, um, and um, when it's pressurized, that'll return to the central position. Um, so that's an easy way of, of telling. Um, 
I mean, it's the only real way, I guess, of telling. Yeah. All <laughs> the ailerons and the tail will be hanging down as well because there's no pressure to hold them up. But yeah, I mean, once once that will get pressurised, once you start the engines mm-hmm. and the hydraulic engine driven pumps start pressurising the system, it doesn't take long. It doesn't take much for the engines to turn to start getting your pressure. Um, but yeah, the actual pressurisation of the cabin. Once you get up to cruise, it, it goes up to a maximum of about 8,000 feet. And if it goes over 10, you know, you'll start getting alarms and at certain certain heights, certain things start happening. But it goes up to about 8,000 feet. That's as high as you go in the cabin. Yeah. And then as you come into land, um, when you actually land, the, the outflow valve opens and dumps all the air pressure out. Once once you've got, well, I can't remember what the speed is, below 70 knots or something like that. It's all, it quite, uh, all. It's all quite simple, actually. It, it sounds complicated, but it is quite a simple s- system. At the yeah, end of it's the just day. a big metal balloon, really. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty yeah. much, yeah. <laughs> And uh, some bloke who travels a lot. Thank you very much for the 1999 donation saying, just finished a lounge call at T3. Four first class lounges, four biz class, uh, and I'm about to board my £17.50 flight to Marseille. Ah, oh, that's cheap, isn't it? Easy peasy. Nice one, dude. Hope you have a safe flight. Hope you've had a great time as well. And uh, Sasha, thank you very much for the £5 donation saying, I've had a lovely birthday meal. Had a big meal of ribs, chips and salad with a starter of garlic bread as well. Sounds mm-hmm. like a great dinner to me, that, Sasha. Thank you very much, both of you guys, for supporting the channel as well. Really appreciate that. Cheers. I'm um, Seb's saying there's a flap next to the tail on the 777 that's quite noticeable if you uh, look at it. If it opens vertically, same as the 75, that's the inlet for the APU. So when you start the APU up to switch in the overhead panel, you turn it, this flap will then open. And, yeah. And uh, the air will go in like we saw on the 73, it's on the side. And on the Airbus, it's actually underneath the tail. So it, it comes open and lets the air into power, you know, so the APU, which is a jet engine, can get its air supply. Alex Polter, thank you for returning for 11 months of Airliners Live membership. Saying awesome stream as usual. Keep up the hard work, guys. Thank you very much, mate. Cheers for supporting the channel. Jill said, I'm off to Liverpool tomorrow for a couple of days. Anyone got recommendations of things you must see? Jill, I am I am the guy for that. <laughs> I lived in Liverpool for about seven years, maybe. Like city centre. Uh, but all the usual stuff. Albert Dark. In fact, I'll just put it in a VIP lounge. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll a, get you some a, recommendations. Put a post in the VIP lounge, and I'll I'll give you some top. I'll be like the Niels of, uh, of Liverpool, <laughs> just driving and yeah. taking it around. Are you going to take it for a flight as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. People were so impressed with Niels' knowledge of Amsterdam and KLM, and he actually has like such a big aviation background. Obviously, he works um, in a flight sim center. He's he's lived in Amsterdam. He is both his parents, I think, were were uh, in aviation industry pretty much. Like, dad was in a Dutch Air Force, mum was for KLM, I think she still is now. Nice. And obviously the guys had like a lifelong passion of aviation, so. Yeah. Uh, Phil Sellers, great to see you back. Hope you're doing well, dude. Thank you very much for tuning in today. The rain is falling, by the way, folks. Yeah, I must admit, we've, um, we can't complain, really, I suppose. We've had a good run for now, but I'm uh, hoping it should pass. Uh, fairly quickly we'll keep an eye on it guys yeah we've got the waterproofing on all bases covered today Shane, so, you're not doing the bingo that was a one that people used to fail to get wasn't it the yeah, waterproofing well, the camera well the bingo is on oh so, is it oh yeah. okay we've already had the, the fire trucks as well which is a one oh. that people used to struggle with and, and I'm here that's it we that's mentioned Feather we mentioned Feather everything oh. yeah like at a full house or two today oh now Andy can you zoom in on this 320 just behind the back door just below it yeah, the easy job. Oh, I've missed it now. Sorry, mate. It's still around the corner. You can see it on this screen. Uh, of course. It's on the right-hand side. Oh, right? it's on the right-hand yeah, side. Yeah, it's on the right-hand side. Yeah. Probably see it when the aircraft departs, I guess. Yeah. Be another one. It was just to show the outfit of You can see the spray building up there on the runway as well. Liquid filling up on oh. uh, runway one here at Manchester. Oh, it's moist. It is a bit, isn't it? <laughs> and I'm guessing that's something that the pilots need to... Account for now that there's a uh, liquid on the runway. Isn't there like some kind of measuring, like or communication method to work out how wet a runway is? Right? Yeah, wet, wet, wet. Is yeah, a bloke goes out in a car and slams the anchors on and see if it skids. <laughs> 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 they, they've got this new uh, way of, of um, letting you know how the runway state. It's got numbers and codes. The six, six, six is dry, dry, dry. And five, five, five. Wet, wet, wet. And contaminated really badly would be like one, one, one. Um, if you've got, say, you've got wet on the first two bits and contaminated on the on the last, you can do your performance so that um, 
you can work your performance out so that as long as you can stop before that, you don't really have to worry about it. it you know, you can you can use that part of it. Use full reverse and auto brake. You know, me, uh, medium. But on the uh, actual performance here, which I'm waving in front of Martin, you've actually got a runway condition code here, and it gives you different. You know, dry, wet, slippery, wet, and compacted snow, dry snow, 10 mil, dry snow, 100 mil, wet snow, 5 mil, wet snow, 15, wet snow, 30. Slash six mil, slash thirteen, water six mil, water thirteen. Got any, uh, got any ice cold and dry. No, it's very <laughs> normal. It don't taste that nice. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you can you know you look at the ATIS and what what they're actually giving giving on that, and um, then you just you tap on what one you want. Um, Brody's asking if I'm going to be at the test. I'm hoping to. Yeah, that's the plan. I'll see yeah, you then. looking forward to seeing all you guys at the TAS Fair. We have just added um, a couple of new products to the website that we're going to be launched at the TAS Fair, uh, just for you guys who can't come. So if you have been on the website, you will see those. Um, if you're a fan of the 757 or the A380, they're for you guys. And there she goes, the only active A321neo in the Jetu fleet G-Sun-B on the reg taking off here at Manchester Airport sadly a, a bit of a replacement for the 7.5 in the long run yeah but they haven't retired any of the 7.5s they've, they've retired a few few years ago but I mean the fleet of what 7 or 8 they've got now seems to be going pretty strong one of them seems to be having the odd issue here and there but it's nothing serious. Bit of maintenance, a few bit trips to the doctors. It's quite interesting. They bought a 7.5, I think it was one of the old Titan ones, re registered it, on yeah. The, yeah, and then they're yeah, just using it for sparks. That, yeah. They're not going to fly it, they're just using it for so sparks. So why didn't, why didn't they... Would it not have been cheaper to just get a Titan to fly it in and then strip it? Why did they need to re-register it? I've no idea. I don't know why they've done that. Yeah, I think there is a little bit of element of almost like a trademark when it comes to aircraft and what you can do, you know, who still owns it and things. Yeah. I think there's something like that. Along, okay. Like, like for example, the Concorde here at Manchester is still owned by British Airways. Um, obviously, it hasn't been deregistered. It's still got um, Alpha Charlie on the reg, BOAC. Mm, okay. Um, something like that, I assume. Something legal, basically. Mm. Uh, I know, like, uh, there are airlines that have... Uh, sent aircraft to the scrappers and things and because they're still registered as the original airline and they have a, a say in what happens to it and you know who gets what from the airport uh, the aircraft so I guess mm, that okay. that's kind of it maybe I've got one here from Simon uh, Greedy what's it like landing in the snow is there a special procedure uh, yeah, don't go off the end. <laughs> uh, it takes a while to clear a runway. When you've got snow, you really need... A f you, you, it's, it's a difficult one because you need extra fuel to hold while they clear the runway. Normally it takes 40 minutes to clear a runway, even on a good day. So you've got to have holding fuel, but you don't want to be too heavy because it'll increase your landing distance because yeah. the runway is now slippery. Um, the, the, the technique is you don't want to be greasing it on. You want to get it down. You want to get right through the slush in the water. You don't want aquaplaning. You've got to get the weight on the wheels so the spoilers will come up and kill a lift. You want to get the reversers out, um, all the break, you know, as much braking as you can. And you know, controllability is an issue. It's to steer it straight. They, they had one a few years ago at Newcastle. An old friend of mine, ex Virgin guy, who's hopefully be on your podcast soon. Um, he came in and landed. And they asked him what the what the braking action was like, and I think the reply was effing awful. <laughs> and then uh, one of the two E seven threes came in behind and uh, ended up stopping right at the end of the runway and nearly went off the end. And there was a, a bit of fallout on that, and then they improved their their snow clearing procedures after that. Now they're quite good at it, but it's uh, it's not a fun day out. Yeah, because I must admit, you, you're coming into the runway and. You really don't want that back end to start twitching about, do you? No, you don't. You don't want any of it twitching around. And, um, you know, you, they might even only clear some of the runway. It might be, you know, it's 45 metre wide runway. They might only clear 30 metres of it, which yeah. really isn't great. <laughs> so it's, um, yeah, you've got to be careful of snow banks as well because we've got to put the snow somewhere. So put it at the side of the runway. And there's a thing in one of our manuals that shows you how high you can have a snow bank from the end of the side of the runway, you know, so you won't clip it with your wings or anything like that. It's, wow. Um, yeah, winter ops, winter ops is not fun. 
And uh, neither is this rain by the sounds of it. It's just absolutely started pelting down the chat. Yeah, it's not fun, is it? Uh, Tracy Sellers, thank you very much. Saying great show. Thank you, guys. Cheers, Tracy. Really thank appreciate you. the donation. Thank you very, very much. And cheers to Thomas. Mr. Tom and Anne. I don't know why I said Thomas. Right. I've never called him Thomas once. I mean, well, only. Uh, for being the first person to order the brand new LED um, 3D desk lights. Ooh. The A380 and the 757. you got one of each. Absolutely beautiful. Go and take a look at them, guys. Brand new on the website if you're interested in those. Um, CD John's asking, does a wet runway um, reduce... Uh, oh, I've lost it now, sorry. He was asking about taking off. In, oh, yeah, wet runway, bad weather, reduce acceleration on takeoff. Yeah, because you've got more drag, because the one's, one way's wet. Um, so you And also your stopping distance will increase because the runway's slipping. So if you look at your landing takeoff performance rather on a wet runway, it'll take you longer to accelerate. Your, your, your speeds calculated will be different. You probably have to have engine anti-ice on if it's below 10 degrees. And uh, the distance will increase, but also your stopping distance will increase as well. So you've got more drag but then on the takeoff, but then when you slam the anchors on to stop, you've got a risk of aquaplaning, skidding, the wet runway, you know, it, it's slipping. Um, same when it comes in for landing, you know, you'll need a lot, you know, you'll need a longer distance to land because the aircraft won't slow down quite as well. And in in the sort of a wet runway when it's like really wet. Would they prefer to use more reverse thrust so that you're not using the brakes and potentially skidding, or would the rever- what what would potentially unstable the aircraft more? The well, you've got anti skid on the brakes um, as long as on the Airbus, as long as you're going above 72 knots and one of the wheels is on the ground, the anti skid will work. Um, this is another problem you get when you're taxing it in snow and ice, slow speeds. The anti skid doesn't work, so you so can't that just like. Is that just like dynamic braking on the sides of the wheels? That yeah, I mean you're putting, you push, you push your pedals and the brakes work, but above 70 knots the anti skid becomes active. Yeah. So below that, if you're doing a low speed reject on a slippery runway with one engine out, steering the thing is quite difficult because you've got an en- one engine out, one engine pushing you to the side of the runway. You've got a slippery runway and no anti skid. It, 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 you know, it gets quite interesting. Um, but the anti skid will, will keep you straight on a wet runway. I mean, when you do your landing perf. Normally, when we when we do the, you know work on the iPad, work it all out. We don't take we don't we, you know have reverses under no. But on a wet run, we'll automatically assume you're going to use idle reverse. Mm. If you want to use max reverse, then great, use it, and it'll stop you even quicker. If you're going in the Isle of Man, it's a wet runway. It'll be uh, or grade medium and max reverse. Yeah, because it's a short runway. Whereas here, you've got three thousand meters, so it's not so much of an issue. Uh, Tom and Anne, thank you very much for the very generous donation coming into the channel today. Sending, uh, was gonna say that I've bought more sat from your website, but Anne won't let me call it sat. Well, there you go. <laughs> thank you very much, guys. You're, uh, really supporting the channel with all your purchases. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Thanks again for the donation as well. Hey, I'm buzzing. Nice one, dude. Thanks for joining us on the old, uh, Kip channel. Legend. Someone's saying they love the airplane mode video. Um, yes. that was a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, I always enjoy it. Nothing wrong with it. Yeah, it's good. They, um, I mean, Boeing and Airbus spend an awful lot of money shielding everything from magnetic interference, you know, interference off phones and stuff like that. But it still happens. And I remember years ago now, there was a Qantas 747-400 going into Heathrow. And someone was mucking about on a laptop, using a laptop, and uh, they, they had some control issues out of it. But it was a long time ago, and, you know, mm. things are better now. But... Yeah, I do remember it was quite interesting. It was... Um, yeah, it's surprising yeah. for me, obviously, when researching it, that it's still very much a thing. Yeah. I kind of thought, oh, it's probably just one of those outdated rules and no one really updates anymore, but it's not. It's still, like, very actively monitored. And obviously we had that issue in the US with the band C stuff yeah. and the radio altimeters. And, um, yeah, they're very much still worried about it. Yeah. Which surprises me because literally everyone on that plane is going to have a phone with them. Yep. It's, yeah. it's just yeah. how it is. And if we do, um, if we're doing all weather ops, we're doing an auto landing, you know, in poor visibility or low cloud or fog or whatever, do we do a PA where airplane mode isn't good enough, switch your phones off. Everything's got to be switched off. Right. Okay. Um, oh, wow. That, okay. that is, you know, one of our procedures where, you know, you must have your phone switched off because, you know, we're sure there's not going to be a problem. We're sure it's, it all works fine, but we just don't take the chance. Yeah. Yeah. It's not worth yeah. it. Um, well, I'm, well, I'm glad our research was correct then. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> we had that um, Boeing, uh, it was saying Vietnam Airways colour, 787-10 in last year, didn't we, or early mm. this year. 
and it was doing uh, a lot of flying around here and at circuits at Bristol and that testing the 5G and the radio altimeters. Um, it's a funny thing, the radio altimeter. I mean, the Airbus relies on it quite heavily. Yeah, and so we can't yeah. auto land without it, and you can't, you can't do an ILS without it. You right? can't do an ILS. You can do a localizer with, you know, you've, you've, you'll display the glide slopes. You can capture the localizer, and you have to go down in flight path angle or VS. Um, it won't auto land. And the other thing that happens as well, which is a bit odd, is that when you put the wheels down, you go into direct law. So the Airbus has normal law, which you fly about in most times of the day. If you have certain failures, we'll put it into what's called alternate law. So you lose some of the protections and um, the flight um, characteristics will change slightly. But when you put the gear down, any time you're in alternate law, alternate law plus gear down, it equals direct law. So that means that you are you have direct control. It's like flying a, like, like flying a Boeing, really, but not as nice. Yeah. Um, you've got a trim. You lose your auto trim. Um, and if you do a direct law go around, it can be quite sporting because you get the big pitch power cup and the Airbus doesn't automatically trim for it. So if I ever have to do it, if I have to brief it in the simulator, I will say but above 500 feet, I'll put the gear up first and then we'll do the go around because as soon as the gear's up, it goes back into all the law. So you're not fighting it. Yeah. But as soon as you lose the radio altimeters, um, you will lose, you will be going to direct law. And years ago, a couple of lads going into Stansted lost both rad outs and they didn't know it would go into direct law because the aircraft didn't actually tell them that. So there's two, is there? There's two rad outs, yeah, there's, the, there's one and two. Yeah, okay. and if you lose one, it's not a big deal. But if you lose both, then yeah. as soon as gear go down, you're in direct law. And they ended up in direct law, and they're like, oh, well, hang on a minute, what's going on here? And they ended up going around, and it all got a bit messy. And it's, it's one they like to give you in the sim. But the other thing you lose as well is your GPWS, Ground Proximity Warning System. Okay. So you use a Department of Defence database that tells you when you're near high ground. It paints on your on your map, and you can see where the high ground is. It's yeah, reds, yellows, reds if it's really high, yellows if it's not that bad, and green if it's below, sort of thing. But you lose all of that. So in you know when they give you the rad out, dual rad out in the in the in the, in the uh, sim, I always say to the you know the first officer, I say right, when I lose a system, I try and rebuild it with whatever I've got. So now you're my GPWS. I want you to get the charts up. I want you to make sure you know exactly where we are. Tell ATC we haven't got it. If they're going to give us vectors and steer us, keep us away from the high ground, mm. and you just sort of rebuild your situation awareness with it once you've lost a it. A different way of doing it. But yeah, yeah, an awful lot relies on the radio altimeter. And what you do get as well, in, in again back to the winter ops, when you've got ice and snow, when you're taxing over it, that the, for the older people who, who remember the dam busters, when they were going to bomb the dams, they had a light at the front of the plane, a light at the back. And they pointed at an angle underneath the aircraft. And when those two lights met in the middle, they were exactly whatever height it was, 50 feet away, where yeah, they needed to drop the bomb. That, yeah. This works exactly the same way. It sends out little radio signals. It bounces up, and it measures how long it takes for these signals to go up. So it knows exactly how high you're off the ground. So what happens when you taxi over snow and ice and stuff like that, quite often you will get, it will misread. And you get some of the weirdest, re- you know, the ECAM will suddenly go off saying dual engine failure. Whoa. And you're like, why? <laughs> you know, you're sitting there with a the taxi, going, hang on a minute. And it give you all these stupid e-cams. For, I can't remember what ones they are, but uh, you can't take off with that. So if you get it on the runway, uh, normally what the engineers do, sometimes also if the, high, the, uh, the icing fluid drips down under the sensors, and that can cause a problem. So you go back on stand, the engineers are cleaning it all off, and off you go and have another go. But if you've got it on the runway, sometimes you have to like taxi forward a little bit to get away from where the snow and the ice is, so these things start behaving properly, and off you go. But I've never heard that before. Yeah, That's it wouldn't happen mad. on a Boeing. But there is, um, there is two ways an aircraft can know how high it is, but it is... So for those of you who have seen the video, obviously it comes in around uh, 2,500 feet and yeah. below... Um, and that's just pinging up the terrain. So what you'll see sometimes is as you're flying over terrain, even though your altitude on your display, which is um, reference from like hectopascals yeah, or sea level, yeah, we sea use, level, yeah. that's you're going to be at I don't know three thousand feet, but you might fly over a hill, and then your radio yeah. altimeter will say two thousand, and yeah. that's because it's using two completely different things, and that's why you can't rely on the um, the sea level for your situational awareness because you just you're not going to know if it, that's not going to know if it's going to fly you into a yeah. into a cliff or. It's on your standby altimeter. You'll have in um, you know, say you're, in, you're you're flying along. You're on what they call standard pressure one zero one three, but on the standby as you're coming into land, you'll have the actual Q and H the airports. You know, Manchester's two hundred twenty feet above sea level, so you just add two twenty feet to whatever it says. Um, but what we used to get in the seven five a lot, which I used to think was great 
you can see on the TCAS there's an aircraft below you. Normally, because you're in a 75, you're overtaking it. <laughs> um, but <laughs> yeah. when, when something's below you, obviously it's going to be 2,000 feet below you, suddenly the rad out comes up and goes, 2,000. <laughs> and you're like, oh, someone below us. And I've, ha- I've had it a couple of times in the Airbus. It doesn't do it so much in the Airbus, but it used to do on the 75 a lot. I suppose no, it's, it's, a, it's noticeable on Manchester as well when you're coming in on, is it two threes where you've got the moors below you mm. and... They're quite quite tall, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the rad out will kick in sometimes if you're coming in on a, on a long final. You'll you'll kick in. Oh, oh um, must have been, been a few Geneva. times. I've descended a bit early in the sim into Manchester and come over them moors. Yeah, it's a little bit when it makes that left turn. It's a little bit closer than you yeah. first expected. <laughs> yeah, Geneva. I think Malaga and Alicante because you're coming over the hill sometimes. Yeah, Alicante as well on about a twelve mile final. I think is on zero four at Geneva as you're coming over the hills. The rad out will kick in and start counting down. Then you'll clear the hill and then it'll disappear again until you actually get to two and a half thousand feet above the ground. But yeah. there's certain airports where it it, it will lead you astray a little bit um i think one of the runways at luton because it's on a hill um it's it's unreliable um when you do your thousand foot call certain airports it'll say in our brief that you have to do the thousand foot call off of the altimeter so you know say the airport's at 1500 feet you go right okay we'll we'll you know do it off the altimeter off not the rad out because maybe there's a low ground and you're going to high ground or whatever Mm. um also uh, i must show you the video later there's um what's that santorini that that one with a narrow runway that you want about in this flight yeah. sim, yeah. That one, as you come in, for some reason, I don't know why, it goes 50, 40, 20, and you're like, oh, hang on, where's 30 gone? And you want tw- you want 30 to flare, so that's another reason why, you know, it can be a bit of an and interesting landing. That's weird, isn't it? Yeah, it's a narrow runway as well, but it'll miss, sometimes it'll miss calls. So. Miss the 30. But yeah, it's, um, and again, when you lose the rad out, it's in the sim. Like I said, I, you know, I get the FO to rebuild things I haven't got. I say to them, you're my rad out. When we come over the runway, say 50, 40, 30, we probably might not be at those heights, but it'll just remind me to flare the aircraft. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right now on the rotation, we're up to speed right out to short hop to Dublin. Hopefully not to bouncy up there today. And Jane Chu, thank you very, very much. Uh, just a little while ago, we are turning for two years of Airliners Whoa. Life membership. Got your gold tail badge now. Thank you very much, Jane. Saying hi guys, these 24 months have passed so fast. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. This is certainly my happy place. That's great to hear, Jane. Thank you very much for uh, spending two years with us so far. That's absolutely awesome. Thank you very, very much. Yeah, there's the um, spurious alerts on the radio altimeter. Uh, it may fluctuate on contaminated runways and trigger auto callouts or GPWS warnings. Um, so what you may get, you may get uh, nav red out one two or one plus two fault. Uh, TCAS nav fault, nav predictive wind shear fault, and also dual engine failure or all engine failure, uh, anti ice captain FO tap fault, landing gear shop absorber fault, and the fun one, stall warning on the ground. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stall warning. No way. Just what you don't want. <laughs> so, only thank you very much for gifting an Airliners Live membership as well. That's gone to Rachel Refford. Thank you very much, Tony. Really appreciate that, mate. So how, how is it calculated a stall with the no rad out? It, it's it's a very complex aircraft. I I'm just trying clear. to work out what from the rad out it uses to calculate a stall. There's a lot a lot of a lot of bits that talk to other bits and they don't tell us about you know like yeah. th- there's a rumor that if you mess about with the clock and get it wrong you can you can lock the flaps and the slats. I've, some engineers have told me it's true and some have said now it's ridiculous but you know there's there's a lot of things that talk to other things there's a lot of things that interface with other things but I've no idea <laughs> it's not like that wonky windows bug where you set your time to a certain time it just bricks your pieces yeah there, really. yeah he's got A320 coming in from Dalaman south of Turkey There's an aircraft going out as well, on the taxi, rather, to the Jet 2737. And uh, one that I quite like, actually, Sander on YouTube, RS5, saying, are the wipers just as useful, useless in real life as they are in MSFS? Yeah. And when do you turn them on and off? <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they're pretty 
pretty hopeless, really. Yeah. Um, some are better than others, but yeah, they're not for, for a multi million pound aircraft, they're not the best. We've got a thing called rain repellent. You've got a little button you press, and it sprays this rain repellent up. But oh, it's like that stuff you spray on your shoes, and you can't, you can walk through puddles and everything. Yeah, I mean, it sprays up on the windscreen. <laughs> All it does is stain the windscreen, really, but uh, it, it smells as well. If you, if you oh, smell it in the flight deck, I, th- I think you smell like. Um, oranges or something then you've got to be a bit concerned because it's toxic <laughs> um, but yeah the wipers are open you've got two speeds and you've got like crap and really crap but um, <laughs> it, they're all right they, you know they, they do the job um S- simon was asking uh, Ooh, what's the most challenging runway airports that i currently land at um i don't like the isle of man because it's really short and uh, on zero eight the runway the ils is actually not lined up with the runway so that's helpful um, the weather can be a bit trumpy there I, I've, I've said it before I'm not a fan of Corfu especially if you have to do the circle although if you watch the flight sim I did with Fez with the difficult approaches we did it then the last time I did it for real we were in thunderstorms and low cloud base and we had to do a different approach because the minimum was too high it was in, you know, we were losing sight of the airfield which was just horrible that's and once fun. we went visual it was alright um, runway 2 run on our Arecife can be a pain um, the southerly runway at Dalaman, I did that last week, and that's not much fun. You're coming over the high ground, and you've got to be absolutely spot on because there's a lot of hills around there, and you're, you're sort of in between them. I used to go into Chambre, I don't, we don't with this lot, but in the last lot we used to, that was interesting flying down a valley, and the missed approach was a nightmare. So, was it? Yeah, there's a few fun ones that you have to do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome in, Emily, and uh, cousin Caitlin, who are watching today, and uh, apparently your cousin works for uh, EasyJet down in London. Nice one, guys. Yes. Thank you very much for tuning in. Hope you're all well. I think we've got a special livery coming in here. Oh, an express from Antalya with the world's best leisure airline livery. Nice. I'll see if it vacates in front of me before I get out of my seat. Oh, that was a that was a bit of a bump on the landing. I'm oh, watching that. <laughs> All right, go on then. I'll give you a picture. Why not? <laughs> Sasha McCarthy's asking, "Do I know when uh, Emirates Triple Seven X could start flying?" Uh, I don't, but uh, the boys did a video on the Triple Seven X. It's well worth a watch. <laughs> yeah. It's quite delayed at the moment. Echo uniform on the Reg, the world's best leisure airline. Quite a nice colourful scheme here on this rather not colourful day in Manchester. It's quite nice. Yeah, not too bad. Josh is asking, have you been to Liverpool? Um, yeah, I have. Long, long time ago, but yeah, I have a few times now. Uh, the issue with runway two, someone's asking what's the issue with the runway two at Arasifi. Well, the southerly runway, um, you're coming in again over the hills, and it's not lined up with the runway. And you've got to wait until I think you're in three miles before you can actually turn to line up with the runway. Uh, there's a RMP that you do that brings you out over the sea and then in and lines you up on a shortish final, which isn't much fun. Uh, you've got the VO, yeah, the VOR. That's the, that's the better one. You're coming in straight, but you, you're at a point called Tuxum at three and a half thousand feet. You've got to be visual at three and a half thousand feet. Last time I went there, there was a cloud in front of us. I'm like, oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, thank God we got in. I mean, at three miles, you have to jink off to the right and line up with the runway, and there's a big shelf of rock near you. It's just not very nice. But I noticed when we were taxiing out, when our air line isn't allowed to land on that runway at night so everyone was coming in on the other runway but the Ryanairs were still coming in on that runway it was night and they were popping out a cloud about 800 feet so they've obviously got different rules to us yeah uh, Matty Moo thank you very much for subscribing for two months on the Twitch channel mate saying uh, amazing channel great work guys uh, you've got no idea how much this show helps me have a great show and we'll catch up soon thank you very much Matty Moo glad you're enjoying the stream mate really appreciate it and uh, I'm glad the shows do help you out as well I'm good to have This EasyJet A320 coming in from uh, Santorini. Oh, nice. Of all places. Yeah. And uh, Eddie, thank you very much for the £5 donation, saying uh, from Yangolan Canal. There you go. Thank you very much, Eddie. Really appreciate the uh, donation. I'm, apologies if I'm, I'm pretty certain I said that wrong, but I gave it a good go anyway. <laughs> I'll give you a bing bong just in case. There you go. Thank you very much, mate, for supporting the channel today. And Mixed is asking, uh, what's your worst landing? Um, 
But uh, unlike well, us simmers, you don't get it popping up on your screen when you touch down, do you? Oh, no, it will do. If you, if you really do a firm landing, the Airbus will print out and tell you, and then you've got to get the engineers out and check it. So you've got to walk there with it's, your sail with yeah, your legs. Yeah, well, you just throw them up, so I've got a bit of I've had a hard landing, yeah. It's like when the tower calls the guy, I've got a telephone mm. number for you. You ring the engineers yeah. and go, I'll get a piece of paper <laughs> Yeah, I need, I need you to come and have a look at this. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, um, the worst one I've ever had... It was actually, thank God, a lovely landing. It was Storm Dudley, was it last year? Storm Dudley and Eunice, we had the two come in. I think so, yeah. Yeah, and I was coming back, yeah, I was coming back in from Hagada. So I couldn't get on as much fuel as I wanted because we, 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 we filled the plane out 18.8 tons. And uh, we came back and we were coming in and we started listening on the second radio to Manchester around about London. We heard a, an Airbus in front of us did a go around, had another go, did another go around, scuttled off a of Gatwick, and Gatwick was starting to get quite windy, and there wasn't a good alternate for us to go to. And we came in, and thank God we got in the first time. But I mean, I hurt me back at about three, three and a half thousand feet. We're turning on the base leg, and we hit this gust, and it actually hurt my back. It was that bad. God. And when we landed, one of the cabin crew came straight up the front, and shook me hand. <laughs> but it was it was pretty 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 rough. It wasn't much fun at all. No, I think uh, there was a f- quite a few people going around. So fair play, you got it in first time as well. Easy Jet just uh, waiting to vacate the thing from Santorini, as we mentioned a second ago. And uh, Craig Naylor, thank you very much for the two years of Airliners Live membership. Say, I'm an OG. Keep up the good work. Maybe one day you might catch me pushing a plane back. Hopefully, Craig. That would be nice, dude. Listen, on our Sunday shows, if you're at Manchester, keep an eye out for Matt Smith. He's up on the car park. Yeah. Hopefully we'll catch it. Do you have, like, a terminal that you're usually at, or is it random? Van Gochen, there you go. How about that, Chester Mike? Is that better? See, this is the thing with names. In Spain, two L's would make a Y. Yeah. Right? So, I just went with that. But listen, Welsh, if, you, if you're trying to get me to do a bit of Welsh, I've got absolutely no chance, but I think I did that one all right. Maybe that was a bit closer to the uh, to the real one, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> But no, thanks very much, guys. Keeping it all positive in the chat as well. We really do appreciate it. We've got an awesome community here on the channel. And uh, as with anything on the internet, we do get a little bit of uh, nastiness here and there in the comments. But when we do these shows, it always makes up for it. We always see you guys being super friendly and super positive, And it's great to see you guys. And uh, we really do appreciate it as well. And uh, people like Matt as well saying the channel really helps you out. Thank you very much, dude. Yeah, we really do appreciate that. Fair bit of spray there. Yeah, and a grey engine cowling as well at the back of that. It's had a bit of work done to this plane. Yeah, definitely uh, definitely not original. It's going to roll out just a bit longer as well. Lufthansa A321 in from Munich. Uh, visit the park closes at 8pm uh, Hakan at the moment so we're making full me- full use of it uh, Roger Terry I'll check it um, if you do want to come down guys enjoy the aviation come and support the RVP because even on days like today where it's chucking it down and you probably wouldn't expect many people to come they're still open all the guys are still here working hard smashing it and uh, we really do appreciate it here on the channel as well because you get some awesome lighting for these few months that we're able to uh, take advantage of it. So let's get some 10 out of 10s in the chat for the RVP, guys. Let me check this mod chat. Stand by. Got a Jet 2 on the roll. 737, 800 series. And that iconic holiday scheme. Allegiant. Is that you? Some update coming in from uh, community member Matt as well, uh, who, whose mum hasn't been too well recently. Um, although, unfortunately, she is going to need 24 hour care going on. Um, she is a lot more aware and trying to talk as well. So, uh, hopefully, Matt, she's on the mend, mate, and uh, or at least as far as she can be as well. And uh, thanks for the update as well, dude. Good to hear, and um, like you say, hopefully, she can 
Perhaps you can uh, keep improving, dude. Yeah, nice yeah. and fast. It's good progress. Another aircraft touching down as well. Two, three, right. Yeah, you're getting quite a quite a queue on the way out now, guys. Quite a few departures coming up. This aircraft's in from Lisbon. EasyJet AT twenty two hundred. James O'Brien, hello, good evening, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Taking that rapid exit taxiway there. Runway seems to have dried up a lot. I mean, they've got some big hair dryers running up and down and doing their bit to dry the runway off. It Is seems it? like Manchester, though, does dry a little bit slow compared to other runways. Like, obviously, we do regular shows at Vancouver, Canada. And um, the runway there seems to dry super quick in comparison. There's a big hair dryer going out now. Proper airliner. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's have a look. Got one of the Jet 2 757s going out. Nice. They should this will be Alpha India or Alpha. I think it was. Alpha. Um, let me check for you. Yeah, just seeing the red here. I think it is Alpha, Alpha India. Alpha India, yeah. Lewis is in the RVP as well, off to the right hand side. We'll, uh, we'll try and catch you on camera very shortly if you. Uh, if you want to dance about like an idiot for a moment, we'll <laughs> film you. Hope you're having a great time, dude. And um, Stephen asking, do you have any social medias where people can follow what you're up to, Mark, or do you not? You don't no. tend to post on no, that. No, really, I've just I've got a Facebook account, and that's it. No, if you want to see me, just tune in the, the best aviation channel around and just see me go. on it. Oh, what's this coming in? This looks a like big Dreamliner. And uh, Emily nice. Maddox, uh, we're not forgetting. We've already shouted you out as well. So just, uh, yeah, we, we haven't forgotten you. We've shouted you out. And uh, welcome to you a couple of times, actually, in the chat as well. Tui Dreamliner coming in next. It's great to see. Nice uh, Boeing wide body. Nice flex on the wings as well, isn't it? Yeah. In for Mantalia, so just a short hop. Huh? <laughs> It'll be a nice upgrade, that, for the... Uh, was it sort of four hour flight roughly? Well, it'll be in one of them, I would have thought, yeah. I think it's about four and a half in, in the bus. I was there uh, last week. Kerry, we have a team in Vancouver that does the shows for us. Henry Tenby is the host, and me and Andy kind of manage it from here. But uh, yeah, it's Henry who does the shows. We, we're definitely not flying over weekly, unfortunately. <laughs> and uh, Jasmine uh, saying, sorry if it's asked me for late to the stream, but what's your favourite airport to land at? Oh. Uh. Well, it used to be Newcastle because it meant I was going home. Now it's Manchester because it means I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a fan of Amsterdam? Yeah. I yeah. prefer it to Paris by a long way. Yeah. So they, yeah they, they, I like Amsterdam. It's all right. Even with the taxi? Yeah. Oh, I don't mind a taxi. It's, uh, it's yeah, Paris is, because it's quite an old airport, it's, it's quite... It, yeah, it's it, it's just a bit bolted on everywhere. Amsterdam is quite nice and slick. It's it's pretty good. They're doing a lot of work over there at the moment. But, so yeah, it's good. Geneva's all right. Um, oh. Like Malta, that's a good one. Um, Tel Aviv, like Malta. Yeah, it's a good one. I like that. Got nice I always get bored flying to Malta in the sim because it's just nothing but sea, is it? Yeah, once you, once you leave, yeah, I mean, it depends which way you go. Sometimes you go to the land, it's quite good. But I've got a nice big long PA, I give them about uh, a bit of history lesson about St. Paul getting shipwrecked there in 69 AD or something, and it's a nice big PA, it makes it a bit more interesting. Yeah. I've got them for most places, They're quite good. Um, I don't know if you can zoom in on the back of the tail, Andy, um, just in, f in front of the silver cone. There's, you see the flap that's opened by the tail that's pointing upwards. That's the APU inlet. Oh, yeah. Um, that's the door that opens when you start the APU to let the air in for the APU. That's, that's the flap oh, that I'm yeah. talking about there. There's something else coming in, chat. 
What's next? Oh. Looks like a Boeing. 737 coming in next. Max. By the looks of things from here. Yeah, from Hagada. Five and a half hour flight for that one. <laughs> <laughs> that long flight, I don't mind Hagadas and Shams, actually. It's not a bad little airport to work in and out of. They're, they're right. all right, yeah. Yeah, you said that before, actually. I, yeah. I did wonder, because I know you said you're not really into the longer flights, but... They're definitely probably some of the longer flights yeah. your company operates out of here, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind. I don't like the four sector days. I can't. I can't. <laughs> um, unless, it's, uh, unless it's Isla and Man and back. Oh, yeah. Twice. Yeah, well, <laughs> double Belfast. I'm quite happy with those. I like Belfast. Belfast's yeah, a good little airport. Maybe on by lunchtime. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> I should be so lucky. Um, someone's asking the airport destination like flying for the challenge of the scenery again the Garda and Sharm are good because you fly past uh, Mount Sinai and the Sinai Pen- Peninsula where the exodus happened that's quite interesting Tel Aviv's good because you see Jerusalem and Bethlehem out to the far side uh, Geneva's fantastic because of the mountains um, again Malta because you go over uh, Mount Etna so that's uh, that's quite good you can uh, there's this I can't think of the airport that's near there I've been in there a couple of times if it's uh, Naples, have we done that one? Yeah, maybe it was Naples, I was thinking of. Hmm. Um, it was one, an angry mountain, mountain was rumbling, and there was all smoke and that coming out the top, so... Uh, Ooh. Yeah. Tenerife as well, you get fantastic view, <laughs> you know, the, obviously the big angry rock there. I'm oh, practically yeah. geek saying, did Mark fly in the airline TV show era? <laughs> no, no, well, <laughs> it was on, um, it was on, they did another one a few years ago, and uh, I, I, I stayed well. Or clear of me. Well, I didn't clear. want any part of that. There's a mate of mine who was a first officer at the time. They asked him to do it, and one of my mates said, "Don't touch it. It's poison to Alice. You know, you you turn up and it's windy, and you can't. You know, it's outside the FO's limits, and you can't land. You'll always be known as the first officer who can't land because mm-hmm. it's too windy. Yeah. And uh, they came on to take the aircraft off. We just got back from Malaga, and the captain came on raging because he'd been swapped onto it. Cameras everywhere, and this lad come on, and it was 38 knots across every every land. He couldn't touch the controls for any of it. So uh, we were on a bit. Chap. He's a lovely lad as well. He's, yeah, I think he's, he's uh, I think he's living in Australia now, but he's a smashing kid. Yeah, he's never fallen again, so. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have a heavy aircraft on approach as well, and seven a five. seven five seven now mm-hmm. rolling for takeoff. Seven six seven in from roads behind. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Seb's asking, we've been to Barcelona much, yeah, thousands of times. <laughs> so, when I was at Newcastle, we were doing it at least twice a week. So yeah. Uh, Bruce, uh, depends when you ordered it. I shipped about 50 out yesterday. If you've ordered it, then there'll be probably shipped out tomorrow. a nice chance to get a 757 with some fluffy engines and uh, my fat belly got the uh, camera strap stuck between the belly and the table and that doesn't stand up so oh. there you go chat don't Wait. have sausage and bacon butties every morning from Greg's and build up all your Greg's points because you won't be able to get up and take a picture you got another uh, classic <laughs> airliner touching down though 767 what are you laughing at I was going <laughs> to say do you think that's a fat belly do you think what I've got <laughs> Relatively uneventful for the 7.6. Yeah, not much reverse thrust being used. Gonna get off in front of us, you would have thought this. Easy peasy. I love seeing the two E767s here. And I got two of them based in Manchester. Quite fortunate to have that. They used to have 7.5 sevens here in Manchester up until about 2020, when sadly they got retired. Vacating at the same exit that the 2E Dreamliner did before. Ollie's asking, I'm going to Belfast on the 14th of July. I'm not on one of those rare days off. <laughs> Seb's saying about Barcelona, the taxi around the 25 left is a killer. Um, if you're lucky, they'll let you cross 25 right, um, but you've got to have both engine running to do it, and then it makes the uh, taxi a lot shorter. Oh, there's a beautiful sunset. Oh, no, you can 
see on the back, you can see the outflow valve there, um, the little door, the little flap that's open under the back door in front of the landings and the tail skid. That's the outflow valve, so it's open, fully open at the moment. So you've got three motors running it normally. Um, so if one fails, you've got to back up. If that fails, you can do it manually from the cockpit. Craig saying he's on T3. Oh, okay. So you can kind of see him from here then. Look, that's T3 over there. We don't really see a very clear shot of the pushbacks, but um, we have had a few waves and things from people who work airside in the past. Looks like there's a runway inspection going on at the moment as well. There is. Good evening, Barbara. Great to see you in. Thank you very much for uh, tuning in today. You're tuning in to a bit of a bit of a wet Manchester this afternoon, but uh, it's going to be a good show regardless. And uh, Craig, thank you very much for the uh, Twitch Prime for 10 months, like a boss. Thank you very much, dude. And yeah, you're joining us. If anyone's just joining us, we have a special guest on today's show. We have our good friend, Captain Mark, who is a Airbus captain based here at Manchester Airport and flies commercially. Passengers around uh, the world. Hello. <laughs> and uh, what's going on here, Mark? Why? Why Have they got the... Uh, Ops vehicle on, is it? Just a, I would imagine just a routine runway inspection, make sure there's nothing uh, nothing on the runway that would cause you any problems. They do them quite regularly, really. Yeah. Especially if you have a bird strike, they definitely do them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Brian King's asking what I keep in my hand luggage. Um, if you tune in to Airliner's Lounge, there's a video of me showing you what's in my flight bag, and you'll be quite surprised what's in it right at the very end. Yeah. Ah, that, yes. that video still needs to be put on the lounge, actually. <laughs> Oh, we've is not, it? Oh, we've not okay. transferred everything across oh, yet, but right, it's, okay. it's on one of our channels there as well. Yeah. And a uh, big shout out to Joanna's boss. Let's give a big bong as well. Because um, they've just let her go half an hour early so she could get home and watch the airliners live stream. Wow. That is 10 out of 10, that, isn't that it? That is boss of the year. Absolutely. <laughs> Someone get that boss a pork pie. Yeah. Oh, it's been a while since I've heard pork pies mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> is that one of the bingo squares, I think, as well? There you go, and uh, Barbara knows Barbara knows all the positions of all the props, yep. letting us know that there is a prop on approach. Don't worry about that, we'll, uh, we'll grab it for you. That's an ATR 72600 in from the Isle of Man. Uh, only eight years old, from 2015. Yep, yeah, so I can just make her out in the sky now. About 14,000 feet at the moment, but there is an aircraft on... The, uh, I hope it's not a 14,000 oh. feet if it's on a broad. <laughs> <laughs> has to lose a few feet. Yeah. 1,400 feet, I should I say. Uh, and we've got this Jet 2 737 first, though. Cheers, John. Glad you enjoyed it, mate. I'm going to grab a picture of this 75 because in the light to go long, and this scheme is pretty nice in the rain. Yeah. Do you prefer this... Uh, colour scheme on the Jetsu 737s does look quite nice Good a nice pan eh? pan everything get it pan <laughs> pan everything um, Alan's asking can I explain how the nose wheel steering to rudder transitions and how right so um, on the Airbus, the nose wheel steering is controlled uh, electronically by a dual uh, brake and system, uh, brake and steering control unit, BSCU, so you've got one and two. Um, it's actuated hydraulically by the yellow hydraulic system, we've got three hydraulic systems. So you've got steering hand wheels that you can turn, like a little steering wheel near the uh, side stick, and you can use the uh, rudder pedals and also the autopilot will steer it. So the steering hand wheels have authority of 75 degrees of nose wheel deflection up to 20 knots, uh, reducing linearly to zero by 80 knots. So as you go faster down the runway, then the the, uh, the side the, the steering um, reduces, and then the rudder takes over and it blends together. It's quite you don't notice it's happening; you just can't feel it. But um, as you go down the runway, you're using the rudder pedals. Um, they'll give you 6 degrees of deflection up to 40 knots, and that reduces to 0, 130 knots. And uh, then the rudder will be doing it, so it'll be purely aerodynamic, um, the rudder keeping you straight as you, go, as, as you get over sort of 130 knots. You have a, a speed called uh, velocity minimum control on the ground, VMCG. So if you're going below that, the flight controls don't work. You'll have to use rudder pedals that will steer the nose wheel, but above that, 
then the rudder is effective and you use that for steering but it blends as you, as you go faster the nose wheel steering reduces to zero and the rudder takes over but you, don't, you just don't feel it happening Is that Logan Air ATR 72? And Barbara asking you all to fill the chat with the prop emotes, guys. Let's give it a spam. Anyone said shortbread airlines yet? Oh, they are now. So, um, Barbara, I don't think I've ever asked you before, um, but what is it in particular about the props that, that you really enjoy? Is it the sound? Is it the way they look? What is, what is it that, uh, that fascinates you about them? I'd love to know. We've got another Sun Express coming in next as well. These are getting so popular at Manchester Airport these days, Sun Express. I know they recently announced expansion to Leeds Bradford Airport as well taking the the airports by storm by the looks of it Turkish operator oh Turkish flights are very popular out of uh, out of here you've got Sun Express haven't you you've got uh, flypigs.com you've got Turkish Airlines yeah. um, EasyJet go there um, they've just launched Istanbul actually that's starting on the 9th of June yep to go along with Dalaman and Antalya Jet 2 and TUI as well yeah um, Ryanair maybe I think Ryanair serve one airport these days maybe Dalaman not sure about from Manchester but they certainly do serve it yeah Martin Taylor hello tuning in from Sefton welcome in it's a very popular place though Turkey right I mean you've got the two kind of you've got Istanbul which obviously is a huge kind of hub uh, for tourism and for travel but then you've got the south coast which there's quite a lot of airports that you can travel to from Manchester these days like you said Dalaman, Antalya, Bodrum is another one. Uh, Izmir, I think it's quite a popular one as well. A Jet 2 flighty. Charles was asking what was my most recent flight. It was uh, Murcia um, four days ago. And I'm off to, well, I'm supposed to be off to Mahon, Menorca tomorrow. We'll see. We'll see. And if Joanna's going to the TAS Fair, I'll see you then uh, in a couple of weeks' time then again, won't I? The people are asking what, you know, where do I like? I, I, I really like flying over Doncaster because I can put the speed brakes out and wake Susie B up. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, nice, Barbara. It's, it's mainly the props and the noise they make yes. went, and the vibration and stuff. That's cool. Simon's asking if I landed at Bristol. Yeah, many, many times. I used to do it all the time when I was based at Newcastle. And yeah, it's a short runway. Um, two seven's not too bad when you, the landing bit's actually flat, but zero nine, you've got to get it down in the touchdown zone at the right point because the runway then dips away from you. So you'll find yourself flying along and then the runway's disappearing below you. And um, it was, um, oh, who was it? Last choice, first choice years ago had a 7.6 where they, they had a hard landing on 0.9. It actually bent the, the fuselage. Oof. And it's now based at East Midlands for DHL. It's DHLM, I think it is. And it had, it had been done in the same thing had happened a few years below, before when it was owned by Vietnam Airways. It had been repaired. And then I remember taxing past all these wrinkles around the middle of the fuselage in front of the wing where this oh thing was gosh. bent. And they, they towed it over the other side and built a hang around it. You see the winglet sticking out the side. I thought, oh, here we go. And uh, Boeing came over and rebuilt it. 
No, oh, well, I said it's flying for DHL now. But yeah, it's uh, it, you can. It's it's a funny one because it, it, the Bristol Airport um, was put on the you know it was built on the hill years ago by the RF. They wanted where, where's somewhere where the weather's always awful where we can teach people landing in rotten weather. So they put this runway up on a hill, and instead of using Filton as the international airport, they expanded this one. So if you've got a, you know, you can go in there on, on a thick foggy day. Normally, if it's a foggy day, the winds are calm. But you can have a wind that's outside the auto land limits of the aircraft. And if it's on zero nine, you can't auto land anyway. So you end up either diverting to Cardiff or, you know, sitting there waiting for it to improve. It's not the best place for an airport. It's a short runway as well. It's only 2,011 meters. Definitely not fun then. No. Tony P, executive club member for 19 months, Tony. Oi, oi. Thank you very much, dude. A garage MC. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Thank you very much for supporting the channel on our highest tier of membership for such a long time. Really appreciate you, Tony. Thank you, mate. Thanks for everything you do for the channel as well. And uh, Chrissy B, thank you very much. The Westerns Deliverer. Gifted an airliner's live membership to the Uber Flyger. There you go. Thank you very much. It's Chrissy. Really appreciate that. Cheers, guys. Thanks for supporting the channel today. If you do want to support the channel, the very best way to support the Airliners Live channel is by gifting memberships. And we say that because not only do we benefit here on the channel, but our community benefits as well. And new community members get a chance to try out Airliners Live VIP. And uh, that's the best way to support the channel, guys, as we are very much a community channel. And if you'd like to do that, that's available on both iPhone and I- uh, iOS and Android now um, by clicking the dollar symbol and clicking gifted memberships. So thank you to everyone who's already supported the channel today and gifted memberships. We really do appreciate it. And count. And yeah, I am. it's mad that, isn't it, about the bent fuselage? It's not yeah. really something that you can just... Yeah, it's a big job. Just it's get a, a bit of a hammer job, and yeah. straighten it the back 7.5, out, you? you've got to be careful with the nose wheel on that as well. You've got to fly it on. You, know, you don't just main wheels touch and let go. You've got to gently fly it. All airliners you have, but especially longer ones, you've got to be a little bit more gentle with them. And I guess with something like that, once it's happened, is it easier for it to get damaged again? Or do they literally build it back to the point where... <sighs> I've no idea what they do to rebuild it. I haven't got a clue. I'd have yeah. to ask an engineer, but I know it's a big job. You know, they have to take all the fuselage skin off and re- re- rebuild it from the inside out, yeah. Absolutely. Um, Carol Smith's asking uh, whether we've got like a tachograph, rest, sleep, no piloting. Well, again, on Airliners Live and soon to be on Airliners Lounge, there is a Pilot Explains video on pilot, how long we can work and when we get breaks never <coughs> and um, yeah all, all about our flight time limitations and barbara just saying as well the jets just don't have the same uh, the same feeling for her it's just not the same the prop sound is strong and that's where it's at barbara loving the props and malky thanks for gifting an airliner's live membership that's gone to ian barron cheers malky appreciate that mate uh, josh tremmy returning for eight months of airliner's live business class Saying superb show as always, lads. Absolutely loving the evening shows. A massive big up to the RVP staff. Absolutely, mate. We love the evening shows as well. And uh, Tracy, thank you for gifting an Airliners Live membership. That's gone to Karma Scotland. Thank you very much, Tracy. Really appreciate that. You're talking about the bent planes. On this, a lot of the 7.5s are ones, especially ones I used to fly. If you look at the back, yeah. behind the wing, on the fuselage, um, you see on some of them these ripples. It looks like cellulite. We used to call it cellulite. And it's, you know, they're old planes. They've been hammered in, banged in, whatever, especially, you know, over the years. And you get these little ripples appear in, in, in the back of the aircraft. Yeah, I think I saw quite a bit of that east mids, actually. Right. Especially on the old uh, 76 cargo jet. Yeah, yeah, Matt's just showing me a picture. That's it. Yeah, Alpha India's got loads of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, There's a, the old Australia's ones are still flying. There's a couple of them that will probably have some of them for me when I was learning to land the thing. <laughs> but <laughs> once you've got it, it's a, it's a fantastic air, you know, aircraft to land and fly. It just handles so beautifully. You've got a big, thick wing. You get a nice cushion off ground effects so to hammer it in. You know, you've got to be fairly unlucky, really. And uh, Phil just saying the Hawker 800 is next out. No destination showing at the moment, but it's climbing like a rocket. There it goes. Do you remember the old um, Lockheed Jetstars? 
little T tail beast jet with four engines right. on the back. Yeah. Massively overpowered. Years ago, I was at Elstree and there was a air traffic controller from Heathrow who was flying, who was, you know, doing a PPL there. And he was telling us years ago at Heathrow they had this jet star lined up on or about to take off and they said, look, you know, we can let you go now, but can you make the boundary, meaning the FIR boundary, the flight information reader boundary, which is in the middle of the channel, can you make 15,000 feet by the end of that? And they, they hang on a minute, they did some calculations, they said, yeah, it's going to be tight, we can do it. All right, well, clear for takeoff, you know, you've got to be 15,000 by the, by, by the boundary. Okay, no worries. And he said, we, he was watching from the town, this thing started, the, the, you know, black smoke pouring out of the engine, <laughs> suddenly this thing just went up. Uh, almost vertical and he said what are you doing he said well I'm making 15,000 by the airport boundary <laughs> like, no 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 <laughs> and he did it I could do it as well he did it yeah he did it I love it easy jet on the roll out to uh, a place I've absolutely never heard of in my life and feeder and feeder is it yeah yes uh, Matt's Bentmore. asking who bent more planes at Australia, it's me or Bruce Dickinson. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't like to say. Thanks again, involved in the chat, guys, and asking all your questions as well. It's always great to have Mark on, um, and I know you guys really enjoy these shows. Uh, get some 10 out of 10s in the chat from Mark as well, because he's, uh, he's here on his day off, yeah. answering all your questions. We really do appreciate it. And uh, thanks for all you guys as well, getting involved in the chat. This, the show is absolutely flying by again, guys. Half five already. Wow. And it's, uh, it's awesome. Mark, you mentioned you might be attending the TAS fair next month. That's the as plan. Well. Yeah, well, yeah. Come sail out, everyone, again. It was a fantastic yeah. time last time. I never stopped. Yeah, we're really looking forward uh, to it this time. It's only three weeks on Saturday, so the 22nd of July. Let's hope your message for members of stock this time. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Yes. And Andrew's asking black smoke over fueling no it's just the old jet engines always used to pump ones, out yeah. black smoke this is There's going back nice four years now Henry's got in mm. uh, in Vancouver of um, old prop aircraft the uh, we're kicking out tons of black smoke out the back yeah, of the convairs that he used to convairs yeah. yeah there's a convair I think it's an 880 um, at Palmer parked up uh, you know it's got the big uh, bulges on the wings and all of that that, that was a fantastic yeah, really quick um, burnt an awful lot of fuel, but back then no one cared. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it was really quick. It was, it was one of the few aircraft where you could use the reversers in flight as well, which was quite interesting. Really? Yeah, you could. I think the inner reversers you could use them in flight to increase your rate of descent. And there, uh, Barbara just saying, "I'm the prop whisperer." Maybe we'll uh, refer to you as that from now on, Barbara. <laughs> I do love the prop planes in a jet. You hear the noise, but you cannot see the interaction with the air. In a prop, you see what you hear as well. Yeah, and no, it's awesome as well. One thing I really like with the props that I've never been able to get a really good picture of um, is when they leave the uh, the trails behind the oh, props. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you see some awesome long yeah. ones as well. They look mega. They were like a lot noticeable on... They were very noticeable on the Dash 8s then, weren't they? The yeah. Q400s. Yeah. yeah, I wonder why you don't see it as much on the, uh, on the ATRs. Yeah, I'm not sure, but... We used, to, we used to get the Q400s a lot in Manchester. I do miss those. Yeah, they are. I was tempted, guys, to do a video about uh, Flyby, but there's two options, really, with that. It's all three, even, is what really happened to Flyby? Because, obviously, there's, like, two rounds. They, they, they had a reboot, and then they almost had a, a re-reboot. Uh, but then, uh, obviously, that was during sort of COVID as well, and... The, the recuperation from that but also Thomas Cook or Monarch as well could make for interesting documentaries to see like what really happened with them uh, either way I'd yeah. love to see one on Monarch yeah the Monarch video would be really interesting maybe all three bit of a bit of a uh, a series mm. for me I think I mean Flyby I mean Thomas Cook was probably the one that shook Manchester the most really and it's Fairly recent still. It was only, what, 2019, I believe, that happened. So not a long time ago. As a friend of mine went to Flyby 2.0. It was actually on his contract. had Flyby 2.0 on it. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's at Eastern now. He's, in, he's enjoying it. Oh, nice. So, uh, who was asking? Uh, where was it? Someone was asking uh, about go-arounds. Um... Oh, here, uh, Tina Stockman. Um, 
when you need to do a go around, split second decision, what does ATC need to do? Well, there's various reasons why you'd go around. Um, the first one is you've come in and you can't see the runway. You get to your what's called decision altitude, decision height. You can't see the runway. You've got to go back up. So you put full power on, get climbing, get some of the flaps away, get the gear up. ATC will then give you headings to steer. Well, you fly a standard missed approach, which here, um, you get to 750 feet, you go right onto a heading of 356, and you climb 3,500 feet, and then ATC will steer you, give you headings back to the runway. Now, you may not want to have another go at it. You may think, well, I need to go somewhere else. The other one might be that you're unstable. You've had, it's a really windy day. You've got stability cr criteria. You've got to be on a certain speed. You've got to be on path. You've got to be in the right place. You're not stable. You've got to go around. Or it's just so windy that you're out completely out of place and you've got to go around. Um, another reason might be we had it la uh, last week, two weeks ago. There was an aircraft taking off. I think it was Jet 275 and it rejected the takeoff. And, uh, there were, you know, you full reversers, all the brakes kick in, spoilers come up, and they stop on the runway. Now the runway's blocked, so this Turkish 330 coming in, ATC had to tell them to go around. So then they go around, and ATC will then sequence you back in if you want to have another go. Sometimes you might want to go and hold for a bit. If you've got a technical problem, let's say you're coming in, you know, and you put the wheels down, and like Fezza found out in one of our sim shows, and those gear didn't come down. So you can't land. You have to go and try and fix the problem. So there's a variety of reasons why you do it. but uh, And with decision height, um, is there any pilot discretion whatsoever, or is it literally that, no? That's the law. That, that is it. That is it. If you can't see the runway, you go back up. Yeah. Um, if you're doing an auto land and it's Cat 3B, you don't need to see anything. And you what don't constitutes see right. seeing the runway? Uh, it depends. On, it, yeah, it depends. Well, it depends on what what it what you need to see. If it's Cat 1, you need to see elements of the approach lighting system. Um, uh, you need to see a fair bit. You need 550 metres visibility. Now, when I did a, a proper Cat 1 a couple of years ago, just after COVID in a crack off, no one had been getting in for days. We heard a Ryanair getting in front of us. We were like, what? You know, we, we were expecting to have a go, go around and go to go Warsaw. And it, the, the aircraft will call 100 above, so you know you're getting close to the decision lights. You're looking out the window, and then just before it shouted minimums, I saw the approach lights. Couldn't see the runway, but I could see the approach lights, and it went minimums. I went, well, that's enough to land. So we took, continued, 160 feet, took the autopilot out. The other problem you've got is because you've only got 550 metres visibility, you can't see down the runway properly to flare the aircraft. You can't, you know, look down the runway, and you're having to do it on feel. Um, if you're doing, say, a Cat 3B, you don't need to see anything. If you're doing a Cat 3B with a decision height, you need to see one light. Um, Cat 2, you need to see three consecutive lights and a lateral element, a cross element, which may be a landing barrette, one of the, the cross beams at the end of the runway. So there's different, for different approaches, you need to see different amounts of things. But some of the time, you know, it's cat, a proper Cat 3B landing, you don't need to see anything at all because the aircraft's doing automatic landing. Yeah. It doesn't look out the window, it's using electronics to do it. It doesn't, you know, you don't need it. But it just depends on what approach you're doing. EasyJet just vacated in front of us from Geneva. And Will P, thank you very much for the 29 months of support. Say my Wookiee is getting closer and closer. Nice one, dude. Yes. I did the Will P dance when you mentioned him. Oh, yeah. I'm still blown away by how Will P and um, Mike. Mike spotted Mike. I was going to molt on an early and I came back and it was absolutely chucking it down with rain solidly. And the pair of them were up on the mound taking photos of me like a pair of drowned rats and they stayed <laughs> out in the rain just to get a photo of me. I was absolutely, I said to them, absolutely blown away by your dedication there, fellas. You know, yeah, still there. <laughs> absolutely amazing. Stand by, my sister is ringing me. Okay. She probably doesn't know what um, can Andrew's me. asking if there's a manual override for landing gear if their failure happens. Yes, there is. Uh, seven five's got a switch. You flick the switch. And it's got uh, a manual gear release. The Airbus has a big handle at the back of the centre console that you lift up and you turn three times and gravity takes over and the big heavy landing gear falls down and locks. At least that's the plan anyway. There's a um, very good first officer at Manchester. I fly with um, her dad was the captain of the Virgin 340 years ago that landed at Heathrow where one of the wheels got stuck. It couldn't, they couldn't get the wheel down. It was tangled up. It was a maintenance error. And it was caught on something in the landing gear well. And uh, he couldn't get the wheel down and he, uh, he had to put it down. Wow. And uh, yeah, he did a good job of it as well. It's, uh, there's a ropey old you know, VHS video of it on YouTube somewhere, but it was, it was quite impressive to watch. The Ryanair 737. Still got the spoilers up there on the wings. They're going to 
retract soon, I, ass- I assume. One of the uh, the few components that help the aircraft slow to a stop when uh, arriving. And they make a lot of noise when you pull them when you're going over Doncaster as well. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. See the flaps and the slats start moving soon as well. It's the, uh, the uh, pilot monitoring does the after landing scan. There's lots of things you have to do when you come off the runway. So normally, I mean, on the Airbus, you, you, you start the flow by pushing down the speed brake lever to drop the speed brakes, and then the pilot not flying will put the flaps and slats away. Um, yep. He'll uh, turn the transponder to standby, um, start the APU, it's quite important. And they changed the procedures recently where the actual pilot flying turns the lights off. I'm not a fan of that. I think really you need to be looking out the window, pointing the aircraft in the right direction, not messing about with lights. It's uh, the guy who's not actually steering the plane should be doing stuff like that, but anyway. And the FA will usually be doing, or whoever's not steering, will be operating the radios as well? Yes, yeah. So I guess getting uh, instructions about where where to go. Yeah. yeah. And guiding you as well if it's a complex place like Paris. The other thing you do when you come off the runway is well turn the weather radar off. Yep. Um, it's quite important. It runs at, I think it's 9 gigahertz or something, and it... Uh, it's not. You don't want to be standing in front of that for too long, <laughs> right? Especially if you want to have kids. <laughs> <laughs> um, so obviously they get the instructions, which is usually a series of letters and numbers, right? Yeah. Uh, for you, is that like you've memorised Manchester now, and you know you, you don't even have to think twice about the instructions you're given, or because I sometimes you see them stopping, looking at charts and things, and obviously airlines that aren't necessarily based here. Uh, for you, is it just like it's kind of the same route every time? And yeah, I mean, we know we're going to probably go down Alpha or Bravo, um, which uh, that one's just gone down Bravo. We might go Alpha, it lean onto lean uh, Bravo, take you onto Juliet, Echo Juliet, and you park around the other side of that that finger there. But you'll brief it before you land when you do your your, your pro briefing. You'll 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 talk about the taxi route, and especially if it's somewhere where you're not familiar with. All right, um, you've got the airline will give you notes of where you're expected to park. So you can sit there and you can go, right, okay, we're expecting to come off the runway. Uh, we're going to turn off here. We're going to go up this taxi. I'm expecting to go off here, turn in here, here. Some places, you know, like a, certain, a lot of the Spanish ones, they'll have a yellow car. that will take you to the stand. You, you get yourself to the apron and then you follow a yellow car. And it, it just seems a bit odd to me because, you know, it's all well marked. Yeah. And, you know, I, I often say, oh, I don't know, I, I'm so glad we got that yellow car. I've never found the stand without it. You know, it's got great big letters and markings and lights and all of that. Certain airports, they will switch on lights on the ground for you to follow. Ah. They'll just say, follow the greens. And they'll program it so that you just follow these green lights. All the other taxiway lights are off, and it's just a set of green lights to follow. Easy. That's good. That's good. So I remember when I was watching that uh, airline TV show, there was a scene where one of the FOs were steering at, I think it was Amsterdam, and they went the wrong way. Yeah. And I don't, it's not a big deal if you do that, is it really? Not really, though, just air traffic will, will turn you around. With Amsterdam, for taxiing, if you're on the right, you're in the right. That normally works. Right. Because they've got parallel taxiways. One's going one direction, one's going the other. But if you're on the right, you're in the right, normally works. Um, quite well there. There is a, there is a, I mean, it, it's an old one from years ago. There was a, I can't remember what airport it was, but someone took the wrong turn and sort of ended up almost nose on with another aircraft. And the air traffic controller, the, the, this lady just went absolutely loopy at them and started shouting at them. And, you know, you're going to have to sit there now 40 minutes till I sort this out, you know, rah, 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 and a right go. And it all went quiet. And everyone's like, ooh, you know, and then suddenly someone went, wasn't I married to you once? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I think I remember that one. Yeah. Simon's asking, is there uh, pressure and tyre management sensors on the panels and how long tyres and wheels last? Um, if you pay for it, you can have pressure readings on, on the tyres. Um, a lot of airlines don't. Uh, they, you know, the engineers check the aircraft every day. Tyres are normally remoulds. I think the pressure of the tyres is about 200 psi, but they use um, they normally use nitrogen because it's an inert gas. So when you're up at, in the cruise where it's minus 50 or 60, you don't want water freezing inside the wheels. It would be a bit unpleasant. So um, 
but yeah I mean it's um there's, there's these funny little wagons around the airport, these big boxes on wheels that the engineers attach to the back of their vans and they put the wheels, because the wheels are, are quite big, so I have to use a van to get them there. But watching them, you know, change a tyre on, on, on a big aircraft is quite entertaining. Watching them come out with this little bottle jack and jack the plane up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something I've never seen, that, actually. Yeah, that's good fun. Colin Platt's asking his son starting his commercial flying. Any tips? Just enjoy it. Enjoy it, put the hours in, and just try to enjoy it as much as you can. Turkish Airlines, A321 Neo, heading out now from 23 right here at Manchester. She'll be going back to Istanbul, I'd imagine. Very quiet. One of the things about them... Pratt and Whitney 1000 series engines are they are much quieter than the Leap 1As uh, when they're uh, not doing their Wookiee howls that is and uh, you can really hear it there it was pretty quiet but imagine that was a bit of a derated takeoff anyway another easy jet coming in next uh, an Airbus aircraft of some sort uh, Matt's asking about the gear. If you use the manual release, um, can you reset it or is it offline to get checked? Um, normally the reason you use a manual release is because there is a technical problem that means you can't get the gear down. Um, you've lost maybe the green hydraulic system on the Airbus. And if you've lost the green, once the gear's down, it's stuck down. And the other problem is that your fuel burn goes up by three. So if, say, you were flying from here to Liverpool and you'd burn a tonne, you're now going to burn three tonnes. And if you're coming in with two tonnes, you've now got a problem. <laughs> Um, there are cases where you might be able to recover a system, say the green overheated, and it recovers, it cools down, then you can use it and get the wheels back up. But normally if you use the manual release, the wheels are down, they're stopping down. This is a very special aircraft here on the channel. It was the first ever EasyJet that we named Whiskey Charlie. Anyone in the, in the chat know the name? A320. With the classic fenced winglets as well. There's actually an easy jet. One of the Neos is flying about um, without one of the winglets, sharklets at the moment. Um, I think oh. it's Hotel Charlie. No, it's not here. I think it's down at Gatwick. But um, someone drove a step into it and they had to take the winglet off. And it can still fly? Yeah. yeah. There's a BA... Well, you got a video of the BA380, didn't you, missing a, a winglet um, when you were down at Heathrow doing the big stormy day. There you go. Got a wave there from the pilot in the captain's seat. Find that at EasyJet, Jet2, and KLM are usually the three that uh, give us the most waves here on the uh, from the RVP. Don't know why. Kerry Davis is asking, have I ever flown at an air show? Would you need special training to fly a commercial liner at an air show? Um, yeah, it, yeah, you do. <laughs> um, it's normally test pilots for Airbus and Boeing who fly at the air shows. All right. Um, there was a. It, it, it was years ago when the Airbus was fairly new. They had an Air France guy who was scheduled for it had passengers on board. Did a low fly past at an airline at an airport during an air show, and um, the, he was trying to demonstrate a, a thing, a protection called Alpha Floor. And below a hundred feet, because you're landing, you don't want Alpha Floor to kick in because it means you're getting too slow. And the engines didn't spool up, and they ended up in the trees. So after that, everyone went, yeah, "Let's not do this anymore," because. <laughs> It's not good. Yeah. Paris Air Show coming to a conclusion, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't heard much about orders. It's not been that eventful, has it, really? It I mean, no. yeah, uh, Airbus showing off the the XLR, which was kind of cool, but not really that exciting. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people were rumouring that, first of all, they were going to uh, announce the 500 series of the A220. Oh, okay. Which would be quite significant because it would have had more seats than an A319 uh, and an A319 Neo for example which I mean who flies them <laughs> but uh, it kind of would have encroached a little bit too much on the A320 range I think is the problem they have yeah. there kind of almost cannibalize their own sales for a plane that is better in some ways but I think 
one of the big problems with the A220 is it's very different from any of the other Airbuses. And like you were mentioning earlier, the transition from an A320 to an A330 is not the end of the world, but I, I'd assume, I don't know it officially, but... I think, with, I think it'd be a full tight rank from the A220 to the 320. I'd imagine so, yeah. Because yeah. it, it was originally designed by a different company, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's completely... It doesn't doesn't look like an Airbus at all. And, I mean, it looks modern. And Airbus do have a nice modern look, but, yeah, it's it's very different. Yeah. Whereas I find the, the Maxes, although they have the nice big displays, they still look a bit dated to me. I don't know why they're... Kind of like the uh, the throttle controls and things. Well, and yeah, that, that, that's part of the certification problem you've got is that to, to be able to fly all the Boeings, yeah. you've got to have a certain percentage of the cockpit. It's the same for any. Right. So the overhead panel is almost identical for the, to the 737-100, you know, from the 50s or 60s when it <laughs> came out, and same with the centre console. Yeah. So it is very, very dated, and the overhead panel is a disaster. I mean, you've got the engine and the ice switch is right next to the hydraulics, and, you yeah. know, I did it in the sim, but I've had, you know, people in the flight turn off two hydraulic pumps instead of the anti-ice. Um, you, you know, I was told years ago by a very experienced guy who was part of the crash investigation team at Cranfield that they'd never get it certified now because of, you know, the ergonomics are so bad. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the bottom line is if you take a Tesla dashboard and stick it in a 4 core team, it's still a 4 core team, isn't it? Yep. Um, Brody's asking, do I know Gareth? If it's the same one, I think so. Who's a trainer? I do. He's a very, very good man. Uh, excellent trainer. And Sturdy Wings is asking, how does the power, plane power up when takeoff? Do you have an accelerator pedal like Carl hand things for the engine? So you, you use your hands. The pedals are for the rudder and for steering it and the nose wheel steering. So you've got two thrust levers, or four if you're on a 380, that are in between you and the first officer. And you stand them up to stabilise the engines. You want the engines up to a certain power. So on a, on a 7.3 and a 7.5, you power them up to, to 40%. On an Airbus, you go up to 50%. When the engines both are at the same level, because... You know, you've got mismatch of engines. Sometimes you've got different fuel pumps. You've got some engines are newer than others, a little bit more wear. And sometimes you'll get one engine that's a bit slower to accelerate than the other. So you get them nice and stable. Stand the thrust levers up a little bit. You get them to 50%. And when they're there, they then you put the power forward and you put it into Toga or Flex MCT if it's an Airbus. Or you'll press the Toga switches on the 73 or the EPA N1 button on the 75, which is on the MCP, the center console. And then the auto thrust will kick in bring the engine up to the power that you've, you preset because you very rarely use full power and off you go oh Annika's in the chat she was uh, featured on the show the other the other day when she flew in on the I think it was on Wednesday last week the Jet 2 A330 300 series yeah with a light out the window yeah 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 awesome. <laughs> it was a great clip that I enjoyed it yeah, apologies guys just a quick call off my sister and the other speculation as well, people were thinking that uh, Jet 2 might place another order of potentially wide bodies from Airbus, but that never came to fruition. Um, people speculating that they were going to order the, the A330-900s, which would have been quite a big jump. I think that 800s would be more suited for what they want, unless they were really looking for that big capacity. But who knows, maybe in the future. Hey, Dwayne, welcome. A brand new airline is live VIP. Really appreciate it. Uh, Dwayne Cornett, appreciate you, dude. Welcome. But yeah, I could see a world where Jet 2 buy their own A330s, though. That'd they, be good. They are, uh, it feels like they've always got the least at the moment. I think Matt knows more than me, but I'm sure that the. Uh, one of the air tanker A330s is sticking through the winter as well here at Manchester. Um, Andrew's asking a good question here. What's the power percent for cruising? Now, this doesn't work on the 73, but on an Airbus, if you take your height, so say you're at 36,000 feet, take the first two, the 36, add 50, and you get 86, and that's the percent you need, so 86%. Oh. Yeah. So if you're at 5,000 feet, you need 55%. If you're at 30,000 feet, 30 plus 50 gives you 80%. And that, on, on a 319 and a Neo, you need to take five off of that, because the 319 is smaller than the Neos, bigger, better engines. But yeah, just take your height plus 50, and that will give you your, your percentage. Um, the 73, I seem to remember it being high, it didn't work on that, because it's not that aerodynamic. Yeah. The Jet 2757 on the taxi out too. 
And yeah, uh, James, don't worry if you can't afford to support the show. It's no problem at all, as long as you are enjoying the stream and you can click that like button for us. That's all we ask. But yeah, don't don't be concerned if, if we do ask for support and donations, because obviously on other channels, you're going to be blocked out from content because either they're doing a broad show and they say it's members only, um, which is what a lot of other channels do. Uh, we don't do that here. So you get all of our content for free, um, but in return, you may hear us ask for support here and there, but it, it can't be both ways, dude. You can't have everything for free and expect us not to ask for support when other channels will charge you for things like a broad shows and bonus shows and stuff like that. It's, it's, we have to support the channel, that's all, dude. And like I say, we're glad you're enjoying it, and uh, it's great to have you with us. And uh, like I say, if you can't afford to support the show, and this goes to everybody, that's absolutely no problem. All we ask is that you get involved in the chat, you click the like button for us on every show which helps us out, and you get involved positively in the community, and that's the best we can ask for, guys. So thanks very much, James, for, for getting involved as well. We appreciate it. And the feedback as well. We do appreciate your feedback in, in the chat. Well, I just wanted to clear that up uh, for anybody else who's, who's wondering the same thing. And uh, Pumpkin, thank you very much for the two months on Twitch saying, love the channel keep up the good show thank you very very much thank you and the air to fly airbus 330 300 for jet 2 has just passed dane on its way and it's on a base leg yeah that'll be here soon nice i don't expect the boys here are going to get their cameras out just a bit yes oh, we, lovely we, pair we, of walkies. we really like the uh the world to fly hybrid have you you seen it before yet yeah yes yeah, yeah. yeah. A bit dirty, this lofty. Could do with a wash, couldn't it? How often do they get washed? Uh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> looking at some, not that often. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I mean, you know, it's weight, it adds, it adds weight, it adds drag. You know, you want them to be clean. Let's have a listen mm. into this. Yeah, it gives a little bit of a uh, mm -hmm, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Here comes another Ryanair. Yeah, super hyped to see this Jet 2 A330 though. That'll be in, in a couple of minutes. May create some nice ribbons as well actually. The 330 is a bit of a ribbon machine. Maybe the the uh, airliner that makes the most vortices of all here at Manchester. Maybe the seven, uh, sorry, the triple seven on par. Mm, Simon's asking how many weather and atmospheric probes are on most planes and they're fail safe. Yes, there's always fail safe. Um, you normally have three pitot probes which point forward, which will be reading your forward airspeed. Yeah, normally have three static ports, which will um, measure the, the static pressure around. And you'll use that in conjunction with the pitot probes to give you airspeed and also for your height. Um, you'll have some temperature probes, a couple of them as well. And in the nose, underneath that nose cone, you've got a weather radar. And um, I think I put a picture up on the VIP lounge of, of one when they had the nose open on the aircraft recently. But um, you've got a weather radar that, that looks ahead and uh, you can see any uh, thunderstorms or large build-ups, horrible clouds that you want to go around and avoid. Plenty of uh, Boeing 737s so far today. Oh yeah, and also on the front there, you, Andy's just had a good zoom in, you've got a couple of angle of attack probes, they're like little wings that stick out the side. And you normally have three of those. 
and they will measure what angle the air is hitting the aircraft which is critical for your wings and your lift and this is part of the problem that with the MCAS that the 737 MAX had that they, the MCAS was working off of just one probe and they had two instances where it failed and caused all the problems and now I gather it works off of three but whenever you lose one probe then the other two will take over and if you lose two then you're down to one the problem you get is if you've got one good probe and two dodgy ones who are both misreading the computers will think the two dodgy ones are the right ones so you have to use again pitch power tables and charts and that to make sure that it's doing what you want it to do and it's very rare. I can't help but noticing, because I watch quite a few of these sort of flight investigation things, probes come up yeah. so often as the cause of the issue, or the at least the initial spark that causes the issue. Like, are they ever looking to redesign or use something different? Because those things... the they just seem to be such a catalyst a lot of the time to, yeah. to losing situational awareness and sort of bringing on sort of pilot error and stuff like that. And it just seems like they seem to have been al allowed to trigger a lot of events a lot more than maybe other, f not faulty components, but other components that are not... Yeah, it's... Uh, the, 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 I mean, would you say failing? They don't fail, but they, they can they're do. very susceptible yeah. to to cause him pretty major issues and you think that would have been sort of designed out in some way yeah I mean the, your basic airspeed indicator hasn't really changed from the early ones you've got a probe on the front which will measure what's called dynamic pressure the forward airspeed plus static pressure because you've got your static pressure around you and then what you get in feeding from another way is you can see on the front of the Airbus just now that uh, Andy had that you've got this grey box and there's another two behind the main landing wheel and uh, the front landing gear and those measure your static pressure around they don't so what you do is you cancel out the two static pressures and it gives you just your forward airspeed. Now, if these get blocked, which happened the other day at Lisbon, I think it was, they've got a mass infestation of bees at the moment and mm. one got inside the probe and blocked it, then your airspeed indicator misreads. And if you lose all three, then all your instruments start playing up. But it's mainly down to icing, isn't it? It can be icing. They're all heated as well. So, um, with yeah. the Boeing, you put the 73, you put them on automatically, but most planes, they just, well, as soon as you start the engine, they self heat. Um, the Air France 447 one was, yeah, they froze up. They were all, they were supposed to be re put, replaced, and Air France hadn't got around to doing that aircraft. They got too close to some thunderstorms, and these probes iced up. And the automatics all dropped out because the autopilots will, they can only work with the date they're given. If they start getting wonky data from free probes, the autopilot's going to go, right, I don't know what's going on, boys, mm. all at you. So what, you know, you've got a chart, but before you get the chart out, what you really need to do, you've got to fly the aircraft, make sure it's safe. So you make sure your pitch is about two and a half degrees, your engine power, this is what we said, 36 plus 50, 86 percent. Right, we're, we're flying safe because pitch plus power will equal performance every day of the week. The aircraft's safe, let's have the QRH out, get this chart, make sure, let's have a look what's going on. Find out which probes are, are, are wonky, switch off the dodgy ones. If you've got one good one or two good ones, keep them on. Um, but it's the startle factor that, that, that is the problem. You're not expecting it to happen because it's it, it's quite a biggie. That's where the problems come in. It, 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 a lot of it, With Air France, it was startle factor. Suddenly you've got a stall warner and you've got an overspeed warner and the guy just pulled the nose up. Mm -hmm. And stalled the aircraft, and as they were and descending, when you're flying through cloud as well, I guess it's even easier to just completely not know what way is up. Yeah, if you don't trust your instruments, that's you know you, you've got to you've got to look out the window. You've got to trust. You, you, sorry, you don't look out the window. Trust your instruments. Um, but those probes actually unfroze um, during during that episode. They did unfroze, right, and they yeah. were giving you right data. But by this time, you know they were they were solidly stalled, and they were going down uh, very There's very no quickly. It's just, I just find it mad how, like I say, the, in a lot of these instances, it's usually starting off around the probes. And yeah. You just think, at what point are they going to say, maybe we need a, a complete overhaul of these in some way? And I'm not saying I know how to fix it, but yeah. you would think by now, the amount of times the probes have been the catalyst... <laughs> There would have been some pretty major changes with him. Airbus have come up with a really good system now for failed, you know, um, you know, uh, failed uh, airspeed indicators and stuff like that. It's got a thing called a backup speed thing. Press a button, and you get this. Your airspeed indicator disappears, and you get this this big strip, and you've got a green bit in the middle, and you keep flying in the green, and it works off the angle attack probes. 
and if you you know it'll keep you flying, it'll keep you safe. And as long as you're below twenty five thousand feet, it works. You know, you must you're not supposed to use it above that. But uh, we did it in the sim recently. We got airborne, um, icing conditions, all of that, everything dropped off, all the bells start going off. And the most important thing is you've just got to fly the aircraft. And air, mm. Airbus golden rules are fly, navigate, communicate. Fly the aircraft, point it somewhere, navigate somewhere safe and tell someone what's going on. You get the thing flying. You can press the button. Backup speed cell comes on and now, you, now you're, you know, you're sorted. Yeah, as long as you're in the green. And it works as you come to configure flaps. So you start to slow down. And then you can start putting the flaps out and the it will move because it knows where the flaps are. But um, it's, it's quite a clever system. If You know, you, you know if you're... If, okay, I'm flying along, say, straight and level. I want to be two and a half degrees nose up and uh, 86%. If I'm flying at five degrees nose up, I'm going too slowly. You know, I'm, I'm staying straight and level, but I'm going too slowly. The nose is up. If I'm flying two nose down, I'm going too fast. So I can take some power off. So you can work it out like that. Yeah. Laurie M's in the chat. Good afternoon. Hey, Laurie. Hi, Laurie. Kevin, Hi. thanks for the 33 months, mate, of business class support. What a legend. I know Laurie loves the Jet 2 A330 World to Fly hybrid. Malky's asked, Malky Scott asked, hey Malky, he's asking, do I have to manually input the Q&H QFE as automatic? No, you, we put it in. You're not pressing uh, B on the keyboard. <laughs> no, no, unfortunately not. <laughs> uh, you dial it in, you put it in the FMGC as well because it needs it for landing. And there was an interesting one at Paris um, a few, last year maybe, it was, I can't remember what airline, it was some hired in airline for someone else. But they got it wrong. Now there's a really good trainer years ago who I did a lot of training with, a guy called uh, Ian Small, he used to do a demo of this. If you get your Q&H wrong by 10 millibars you're 300 feet low and this is exactly what happened this this Airbus came into Paris Charles de Gaulle and they ended up I, I think it was seven, 25 feet off the ground like 3 miles from the runway so um, yeah you, you want to make sure you get that one right there it is the A330 yeah, we'll also fly a lease for Jet 2. Portuguese designated aircraft. We uh, we listened in to these guys on the scanner the other day. Portuguese crew. It's quite cool to him being vectored over Liverpool and uh, into Manchester. Oh, look what, look oh, what we look. got. Another E2 little, Wookie. Uh, Wookie guys, let's turn it up. These. What a lovely pair of Wookies. If only that 330 was going a bit slower and they forced him to slam his brakes on. Yeah. Here we go, let's have a listen into this. Hey Laurie, hope you're well. Give it a little rev for us. I was doing a war round the other day, and there was um, it was a three twenty Neo with the Wookies on, and I'm sure he was doing that because the noise coming out of this thing it just kept on and on. It was going up and down, up and down, up and down. Yeah, I thought it. you're having a laugh, you are. Son. Absolutely love it. What a great noise that was. <laughs> yeah, if, uh, hopefully we uh, we see plenty more of those in the future. Yeah, I do like that plane. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah, lovely. Easy jet. A couple of easy jets down the end, waiting to depart. But on the runway first is a two E Max out to Rhodes, uh, followed out by uh, A three twenty from Easy Jet to Tenerife, and a uh, Easy Jet A three twenty to Alicante. And Chris Bendles is asking, what's the most awkward, difficult UK and Ireland airport to land at? Well, Ireland, I'm not sure because I've only done. Belfast, Aldergrove and Dublin out of there. And they're both great airports. Um, the UK, the Isle of Man. Um, followed by Bristol, I would have thought. Like, I gather Leeds is a bit of a pain as well, but I've not uh, I've not been into Leeds. Yeah, you're not a fan of the Isle of Man, are you? <laughs> no. No, it's too short. And, yeah, like I said earlier, it's just... just a 
Looks sounds like a Max eight. It is taken off next with Huey. Yeah, do want to look? Is you had you back a steak, Andy, on your meat diet? I have not. Not, not had you chew back a steak. Chew back a steak. Yeah, it's a bit chewy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get me coat. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going up very well, is he? G Tom Tumby. Like the their version of G Sunby. Yeah, not much definitely not much climb up there. Mm, it's it? kind of roads. Hmm. Weird one. Yeah, from a, a chewy to a, a tui, I guess. But that was a uh, not a very sharp climb out. Got an easy jet coming in next. Mismatching uh, landing lights by the looks. Some LED, some old school filaments. Uh, Matthew Kane's asking, is Isle of Man Captain's Landing only? Yes, it is for our lot. It used to be Captain's only takeoff as well. Um, but apparently it's not. And Tom Lowe's asking, what's wrong with landing in Dalaman? On runway, I think it's 2 1, the southerly one, you're coming over the hills and uh, you've got to configure really early. It's, you've got to brief it really, really well and configure really early. You, you've got to get flaps 2 out quite early on. And uh, RMP 1 9, that's the one. So you come in, uh, now I've got it in the clipboard. I can't remember the arrival. But yeah, you come in over the high ground and you aim you end up at this point called Atmon. And you've got to be nine thousand feet. And it's it's not that far from the runway, it's also offset. But you come in and you get to a point called Bravo Sierra one one six, but you can't you're not lined up with the runway. You've got to do a right turn, but you've got to wait till you get to sort of Bravo Sierra one one seven. If anyone can get these charts up and have a look, it'll, it'll make sense. And then you've got to turn right sort of line up with a runway but you can't be too aggressive because there's a big hill out to the right hand side and uh, yeah it's it's just you, you're really you know the, the MSA around there is 10,000 feet and you're sort of flying down a bit of a valley dodging hills it's just not much fun luckily I did it at night you know, last week whenever I did it two weeks ago so I couldn't see the hill so that was nice <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd say I'd, I'd definitely prefer to see the hill I think <laughs> but I'm like, yeah, even my yeah. Uh, Peter T saying good evening everyone what a very interesting chat tonight extremely informative and friendly thank you very much Peter it's great to have you with us today hey thank you very much as well Peter just saying uh, I've been looking at your site again since the first um, uh, since first looking on Sunday uh, I think you've done extremely well to get everything yeah. up and running since the pandemic well done guys hey Peter really appreciate that mate thank you thank very you. very much dude yeah we've been around since uh, what 2018 2019 sort of t- uh, 2017 really yeah um, so yeah uh, pandemic hit and that was like our motivation to, to rebuild the channel and yeah the thing was Peter for us um See, when when I talk about this topic, I always struggle to work out how to say what I'm trying to say with without offending or upsetting people. Obviously, so I always say that the pandemic was horrible for a lot of people, and it, and in, in some cases, it, it was for us as well. Yeah. However, for us, it really did us. It really did give us the kick up the backside to go full send it on the channel because. We were in the events business before Airliners Live. Uh, we were event technicians. Uh, Andy was in electronics and events and things like that. So not only did we lose the channel, but we also lost a lot of our work as well. So at that point, there was really nothing left to lose, to be honest, yeah. for us. It yeah. was like, well, now's the time. If, if we're going to just take a chance then it can't get any worse than this let's just let's just go for it and just see what happens and and that's why i do say that in some ways for us the the pandemic really did not help us out but it really put us in a position to be brave and 
in a position to just really just give it a go and I think without it we may have delayed it a bit longer and and in the end obviously we've made the right decision but it, it really was a, a a turning point for us absolutely and it's not just live streams as well you know a lot of what we do is is offline you know probably the vast majority of our work isn't even being live yeah uh, we do obviously the two Manchester shows per week but you know every other day we're, we're, we're running a merch store where we're, uh, we're, we're doing pre-recorded content we're uploading social media content photos and events like the task fair it's yeah we're in we're in work just as many days as everybody else is and most of the time we're we're doing 12 hour days and yeah five we six love days it. a week basically absolutely love it and we wouldn't change it for the world but i know a lot of people do say oh well you're full time but you only stream twice a week and that is because we put so much effort into our pre-recorded content yeah that we and obviously the thing is with merchandise as well we pack and ship and handle all of the orders ourselves. Um, a lot of other YouTube channels in general, not just in the aviation sector, they will use like third party companies and you guys are getting cheaper products. They're just throwing it in bags and not really caring whether it arrives to you nicely or not. Whereas with us, we like to check the quality. We make pack it ourselves, make sure it's nice and safe. We've chuck our stickers in there and sometimes chuck little thank you notes in there randomly for little bits and bobs. And, and if we're feeling generous, maybe chuck a freebie in one or two of the orders. And that's just because we want to make sure everything's the best it can be. And that does take up a lot of time. And, uh, that's why we only do the two shows a week. But we think the shows that we do do, we put a huge amount of effort in as well. Yeah. Um, and the pre-recorded stuff, we write all our own scripts and, we film it and edit it all ourselves. So there's so much that goes into it, guys, that literally, if we had the office cam on 24-7, you would not believe how much time we're actually in the office through the week. It's, it's pretty crazy. And Jen's in the chat. She'll tell you that Friday's our day off and nine Fridays out of ten, I'm in the office for as long as I can get away with. <laughs> literally till most times what do you say to like two Andy but yeah. it's usually two o'clock something like that on a Friday so it's um, like I say we wouldn't change it for the world but it does kind of put into perspective that it isn't just a live channel anymore unfortunately well I wouldn't say unfortunately but not even mentioning yeah. Project um, uh, yeah Project Net doesn't even come into it like that's yet another project which is being developed completely in-house by us and our friend Zach who's a, a website developer yeah. um, and we're coming up with the ideas we're making all the graphics for it we're in hours and hour long dev calls with him coming up with a design and just because it's fun and we love doing it and that's why maybe some of you guys may wonder why we don't stream more than twice a week but honestly there's just so much so much going on and it's great fun all of it is is absolutely awesome and also uh we'll probably have a lot to show you guys at the task fair regarding uh project yes as well that's the plan we hope yeah, to yeah, show yeah. you guys some project net at the task fair so for anyone who's interested keep an eye on the task fair guys yeah it'll be around our stand kind of area Another two E Max taken off here. Yeah, that's right, Tom. Yeah, yeah you're right. Dude. Cheers, Matt. Appreciate that, mate. And another, another thing we do as well, obviously, with the pre-recorded content, we have two other YouTube channels that we upload to. So the first one is Simulate by Airliners Live, which is everything uh, live. Uh, sorry, everything flight sim. Uh, so if anyone's into anything flight simulation, I'd recommend giving that a follow. Absolutely. Because uh, Fezza, who's the guy who runs it, uh, is uploading really regular content there. He's been doing such a good job. He 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 lives and breathes flight sim. You know, he, he works on flight sim as a, as a day job, and he does the flight sim shows for you guys, and he does content for us for it, and he has a real passion for it. And he's constantly uh, in the know about the new developments about what's going on in the world of flight simulation but then also we've got another brand new channel called the airliners lounge which is like our kind of more casual documentary style pre-recorded videos where we're on camera we're talking through things uh, we've done a video on 
the uh, future of the jumbo jet yeah. you know, looking if there's going to be another a380 for example uh, then we did a video on the triple seven x another great one and then the more recent one uh, was is airplane mode still uh, well needed is it still important and we filmed that and wrote the script in the same week that because you guys have been absolutely incredible we shipped about 250 merch orders <laughs> yeah. that week and uh, as tom said i definitely was the packer boy for that week i, I think i saw andy for about 10 minutes yeah. <laughs> one day well <laughs> and uh, yeah as i say we we pack and shipped it all out and it was <laughs> Pretty crazy the amount we were taking to the post office, guys. You've been nuts. I don't know. I think we have mentioned it to the VIPs, but in we obviously have an office space that we have uh, for airliners live these days, and we've actually had to expand that just for the massive increase in, in merch, you know, demand that we've had on the channel. And uh, like you said, we've, we, there's a new product on there. We, you know, you can go and check it out on the airliners live store and. Yeah, they were only added today, guys. I think a lot of you guys may not have seen them yet. Um, I can see a lot of you snapping up the lanyards, but there is some awesome 3D um, LED illuminated uh, desk accessories, which depict the A380 and, if you love it, the 757, all with multiple colors, USB powered, really, really cool. We're going to show you at the RVP task fair. But they are on our website as well, guys, if you do want to have a look. They're, uh, they're pretty cool. We've took some pictures of them today, actually. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Peter T, thank you very much for your kind comments and for becoming a brand new VIP, dude. Really, really appreciate it, Peter. But no, like I say, we, we're loving, loving the channel. And uh, yeah, we're uh, super, super proud to be doing what we're doing and fortunate as well. We are indeed. And it's it's all possible by the community as well. So one of the things that we love is the fact that the majority of our support comes from the VIPs, and the VIPs are the ones who really make the community good. Yeah. And that's why the task fair is so fun because we get to actually hang out with you guys, and it, it just it's like the best day of the year. Really, it's like Christmas to us. Yeah. Um, and as, as I said earlier, for me, it's like the community is the main the main thing just keeping the channel going keeping us positive and things like that because i even we don't draw any attention to it on on the channel but even last night we had someone coming in making comments i won't go into it we're basically saying because i don't fly i shouldn't be making a video for you guys talking about something about flying basically that, that was the general gist of it anyway and I, I said to jen i said why why are people so nasty and and you know just talking it through a little bit and then I scrolled through the rest of the comments and every single comment apart from that one was just people saying, what a mint video. Thanks, guys. Super informative, really well edited, really well written, really well presented, things like that. And then I just said to Jen, you know what? There's one person there who's who's not being nice, but then the rest of the community is just absolutely mega. And that's the thing that obviously we get a lot of that on the channel and it just gets ignored and it gets ignored because the vast majority of the community like you guys in the chat now people who get involved in the comments are just always like super supportive of the work that we're doing and always trying to come up with new ideas and telling us oh maybe you should try this and maybe you should do that and honestly i think the community we've got on airliners live is probably one of the friendliest in at least live aviation i'd say live streams in general but definitely in live aviation it's something we comment on kind of quite a lot in the office as well in it really yeah there is a little gang of troublemakers around this this airport in particular but they are very small in, in comparison and and it's great just that the numbers of uh yeah. people who are supportive and that's what i mean they, they get completely outshouted by the huge sort of supportive community we've got here on the channel and people like that just have just have no place in our community and we're quite happy to get rid of them pretty quickly one of the uh, other things that we work on of course we mentioned earlier on is uh, the pilot explain series which captain mark pioneers and uh well his wealth of knowledge like really shines through on that we've got another video in the works at the moment should be up soon hopefully yeah Oh, sorry, I, uh, I'm yeah, in June. You so. guys have uh, spending a lot of money on that as well, aren't you? I mean, that, uh, some of the bits you've bought to make that uh, 
uh, you know, a better series has, has made such a difference. Yeah, they? definitely ah, the film yeah. in the film in space, especially. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah we, the, uh, the the little gadget we used the other day, I was very very impressed. It made my life so much well, easier. It's not just your life. We we bought <laughs> that after the first pre-recording video <laughs> <laughs> and realised, hold on, we, yeah. we are not going to remember these scripts. Yeah, that was what I was struggling with. You know, when we were doing them, is trying to you know have keep check me notes and then trying to remember what I'm supposed to say. And now it's so much easier. It's great. Yeah, yeah. Um, got the sound briefing as well which is uh, almost done yeah just a few finishing touches on that yeah that's good man. it's um steve's asking how many hours to pilot you out flying a week well if you go on airliners live and soon airliners lounge i've done a video on that so it explains go. all what we can do good mark trying to get all the views he's going <laughs> <all the world. laughs> no just on your channel to get more views um, um, andrew king sorry mate thank you very much for the five months business class mm -hmm. member saying uh, you guys do a great job and we are truly grateful for the effort and the time you uh, and the staff put in hearts for you guys thank you very much Brian really appreciate it dude Andrew Greenall's asking, is there an age limit for flying commercial airlines? Could you start learning in your 40s? Yes, you can. I know someone who did that. Um, you will be made to retire at 65. Um, so if you start from scratch at 40 or in your 40s, you have to work out whether you're going to make back the money you, you outlay in the cost, bearing in mind it's about £150,000 now. So, uh, yeah, if you've got lots of money and you just want to do it, then, yeah, you can. But, um, <laughs> yeah, there's no age, I, and there's no age limit. Yeah, Rachel, you right. You don't have to fly to know a bit about flying. That, that's it. And with comments like that, I, I, I can guarantee at least once in that person's life they've commented on the football in the pub. And uh, are they allowed to talk about the football in the pub if they've not, <laughs> they've not been playing on the pitch themselves? I don't think they are, I do, right? <laughs> yeah, it is funny. But, you know, it says a lot when someone, the only negative thing someone can find is the fact that you don't fly. It's very nitpicky. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a good thing in my yeah. Case. No, it is it is good. It's it's one of the things I think, guys. <laughs> for me, it's probably been a bit harder than Andy, I'd say. But as the channels got bigger, that's kind of increased as well. And I think now I'm kind of learning to just not even bother writing back. Just insta ban, forget, <laughs> and uh, just just get back to enjoying what we're doing. And it's uh, it is good fun. I'd just yeah. get you on a flight with me to Ireland, man, that'd be good. Well, I've already said first flight, uh, one of you on a 220, I'm afraid, so unless oh. you jump in ship. Watch out. Uh, or yet. unless you need uh, unless you need a little cheeky first officer. You know, I've done I've done a few thousand hours on VATS. Well, that yeah. As long as you don't drain all my hydraulics like Listen. someone else did recently. <laughs> well, funnily enough, um, I did a flight in the sim yesterday at work just because uh, we needed some footage for another video that we're filming. And, it was um, the, the airplane mode uh, video, wasn't it? Oh, like, so it was, yeah, the airplane mode video. So the, the rad and, and things. I thought I greased it that much that I didn't hear the wheels down. And I thought I'd better report it to the guy. I said, mate, I may just have done a greaser, but I'm just letting you know I didn't hear any wheels down sound. And he come back in a few minutes later going, yeah, sorry, you didn't grease it. The sound's corrupted. <laughs> so there was no wheels. And I was there just like coming down, like flaring it down the runway. I thought, I'm getting like near the RVP and I still put my nose wheel down. I'm like, are we going to touch down at some point soon here? Realising obviously we're already down yeah. on the ground. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, Airbus and Boeing don't tell you not to do that. They just tell you, you know, 30, between 20 and 30 feet, a slight check, take the power off, and on the 75 you slowly close the thrust levers. So the idea is that they hit the stops when you touch the ground. Yeah. On the Airbus you just shut them. And the idea is you just want it, check it, and let it just settle down, just reduce the rate of descent. If you're holding it off to grease it on, then, you know, you're burning up valuable runway. Absolutely. Um, Matt just pointed out, there's a good one here from Strody. Are we going to run out of pilots one day? What with the large amount of money it takes to become qualified? Well, Ooh. there is a pilot shortage at the moment. Um, but there's an awful lot of people who somehow, I mean, you can get business career development loans or whatever to, to fund it and you pay it back. A lot of the lads, you know, they're paying it back for 10 years. But you can get those, you, it used to be a lot easier, but you can get that money as a loan. But there is an awful lot of people coming through at the moment, awful lot of new cadets coming through. But yeah, there is, uh, from what I gather, it is, um, it is, uh, there is a pilot shortage. So if you've got, you know, have a look down the back of your settee, if you've got 150 grand lying around, go and do it. If you find 300 grand, pay for Fezzer to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen the new Aerosoft A330 trailer release today? No. Harry, no. <laughs> get it in the Discord. I'll watch it straight after the show, mate. I reckon Fez has seen it. Mate, Fez probably has seen it. Harry, that's awesome news, mate. Really looking forward mm -hmm. to getting a... Uh, a long-range aircraft in the sim, I must admit. 
Yeah, the three says he's a really good uh, wide body because it's quite flexible, isn't it? You see Jet 2 using it on the, the shorter well, flights. I'd, I'd prefer to get something where we can do shorter flights that. Like, when we get the A380, that's going to be mega, but you can only really do the shorter flights out of Dubai, really. If you want to be flying real-world routes, that is. But um, that would yeah, be awesome to like get a whole decent long hauler. Manchester to Palmer and things like that in the 330 would be that's nice. It. Yeah, that would be mega. Steve Barnes, thank you very much, mate. Gifting an Airliners Live membership, supporting the channel and the community. And that's gone to Spartan Expert Cleaning. There you go, Spartan. <laughs> Uh, Melky Stoddart's asking, would I have given Kai Tak a go if I'd had the chance? Um, yeah, I mean, I did it. it my mates, <laughs> a lad I talked to fly years ago, really good mate, he, he, with his work and that, he couldn't go flying light aircraft as much, so he built a 777 sim in his garage. And it is out of this world. Is ah. it? And it's just so good. I mean, when, when COVID ended, there was a virgin guy in, in his village um, who came and used it to get his hand back in before he went back in the simulator. Oh, it's, right. it's absolutely first class. Nice. And we did it there years ago. And, you know, it, it was actually, it was good. It was good fun. It's quite it an was, unusual plane to, to build a, a sim. I'm guessing he was a fan of the plane, wasn't he? Yeah, well, he, he had a, he's a very good mate of his, Garno. Um, he used to work for BA in the um, planning department. And they used to get, years ago, mates' rates to use the Sims at uh, Crane Bank. And they used to go up there and have a, have a whack around in, you know, in the 777 Sim and a few others as well. So it sounded like quite, quite you know, good fun. And he really liked it. So he, he built that as a Sim. But yeah, it's good fun. He actually, the last time I was there, he set up, he's got an Airbus one as well. So he set the, the Airbus program running in the Boeing Sim. So that was a bit odd. Hmm. But it was nice to actually have a, a yoke and actually have an, an Airbus when you turn it left, it actually goes left rather than it has mm. a little committee meeting decides whether yeah, it's yeah. going to let you do it or not. We were um, we were chatting. You know, sometimes you think, oh, if I had unlimited money, I'd do this and I'd do that. And uh, I was saying to Andy, I said, I'd make a Dash 8 sim. <laughs> Just because no one would ever come and fly it with me. Yeah. But I'd absolutely love it. Because I... The... The Dash 8 in uh, prepared P3D was absolutely awesome. I love that. I really hope they bring it to uh, Microsoft Flights. And Fez would come a flight with you. Fez would fly it. Fez would me come and, down. Me and, uh, me and Fez are, um So there used to be a little bit of a meme with the Majestic Dash 8 where every now and again it was coded into the plane that they would forget to remove the gear pins. Oh, and yeah. you had to ch it was part of the checklist to check the bag behind the seat whether the gear pin flags were hanging yeah. out and you'd, you'd not bothered you don't check it this that the other and um, me and Fezzi used to like flying out of Jersey quite a bit and um, we didn't check on Vatsim before we started our flight we thought oh it's a bit busy here turns out there was only a Channel Islands event on oh. on Vatsim <laughs> So we're like, oh, buzzing, we got control here. This is mint, this is great, nice and busy. Dead confident, obviously, me and the Fez, we've flown the Dash 8 loads, get out straight up. They go, all right, yeah, that's it, positive climb, gear, gear up, jump, jump, gear up. No, I did it, mate, about a few minutes ago. Gear pins were in the bag. <laughs> so at that point, we know that we were flying all the way to Manchester with our gears down, we didn't have enough fuel for that. So on a Vatsim Channel Islands event, we had to radio up, call the Pan Pan Pan, come back into Jersey. And they, their controllers must have gone, these guys have only done this because there's an event on. They had to shift all of the inbound traffic out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> the VFS had come in and landed in pits of our gear pins and disconnected and went back up to Manchester. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Outstanding. Yeah, yeah we've got to check our gear pins every, every morning, make sure they're there. You get some... You get some nutters on that simul they'll be literally the busiest event and they'll call like a mayday for a fuel emergency just to spice everybody and it was literally just completely by accident and uh, yeah we ended up doing it it was so mate it was so embarrassing <laughs> oh, that was funny Mate, it was good. Well, why is it whenever Fez is in a sim, there's a problem? <laughs> <laughs> oh, was, was it so John saying it wasn't? You can't remember. Was it you or was it Charlie, John? It was either you or Charlie. One of the two of you, anyway. I was definitely involved. But if you're saying you can't remember, it was probably Charlie. <laughs> um, well, that was uh, that was funny. That. 
Art Fault's asking, am I allowed to have friends or family in the jump seat? No, no, we don't have anyone on the jump seat unless they work for the airline. They used to, um, didn't they? Years ago, yeah. Yeah, used to. I mean, that, that's what got me into it. I did a flight to Newcastle on a 7.5, and they said, oh, come and have a look at the front. It was my first flight ever, and sitting there in the front of this 7.5, and there was no TCAS, so they were a bit busy looking for an aircraft going over, and I thought, oh, I want to do this. Wow. That's cool. But yeah, donkey years ago, that. Uh, Kerry Davies, let's get a very warm welcome to the community, guys. Same first time here today. Uh, really enjoying the channel. Thank you very much, Kerry. Uh, just to be completely transparent, Kerry, we don't have a pilot with us every week. <laughs> but uh, I'm glad you're enjoying the stream today. Thank you very much for getting involved. Um, Owen Flemo was saying he'll have to get himself on one of my flights one time. Well, yeah, yeah I'll tip security off. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> when you know when you guys were doing your Lanzagrotti stream, and Fez yes. was going with you, I had a plan. You see, I'd, I'd arranged it with a couple of mates at the airport where I, th I was hoping Fez was going to fly out here with you, and I was going to have a word with a couple of guys who were going to come up, you know, dressed at, you know, and say, yeah, "Can we speak to Mister John Ferry, please?" <laughs> and get him up, and they were going to get put the big blue gloves on and say, "We were, <laughs> we've been told you're, you're you know you're, you're transporting some." Thing inside you and all of this, just to and get them to film me. You know, I had it all. Yeah, I had a word with a few people on the handler's side, and they all up for it. Like you know, and this the, guy wants me to fly with him on my first flight, but he uh, absolutely no chance. I wouldn't do that to you. <laughs> you didn't drain all my hydraulics alive on YouTube, did you? <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Not a pilot. Not a pilot every week. Week sometimes we have John Fezzer saying Malky. There you go. There you go. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> He's good Fezzer. Mm -hmm. Actually, talking of hydraulics, there was an aircraft had a hydraulic leak coming out here last week. With the gear landing gear landing bay gear landing yeah, gear bay doors. The doors were open. Yeah, yeah that's because they'd lost the green. So what had happened is they'd taken off on zero five, I think it was, and as the gear had gone up, there was. Um, You've got to imagine that the landing gear is incredibly heavy, it weighs tons. Your hydraulic system runs at 3,000 psi, and when you put the gear lever up, suddenly this hydraulic system goes into life, 3,000 pounds of square inch of pressure moves, and a pipe ruptured or popped off the PTU, the proud transfer unit, which, in one of our upcoming Pilot Explains videos, we'll be talking about the barking dog noise, which is the PTU. So what's happened is the hydraulics, the green hydraulic system has drained all its fluid out. Some of it's gone on the runway and they've got the gear up. You've got a warning on your screen saying you've lost the green system. So they've gone and held at a point called Dane over there and they've sorted it out. But what then happened is the PTU is driven either by the green to power the yellow or the yellow to power the green. It doesn't transfer fluid, but it's powered by one to power the other if you lose the engine pump. And the engineers were telling me that the PTU actually shook so much, it rattled itself and, and came off the aircraft. He said, I've never seen anything like it. Now, I know the captain involves absolutely outstanding guys. A lovely, lovely bloke, really, really good. And he had a brand new first officer as well, yeah. who hadn't finished his training long. He said he was really, really good. But now he's getting funny readings on the yellow system as well. You've got three systems, yellow, blue, and green. You don't really want to lose two, as we found out in the sim, thanks to Fezza. It's a big deal. So it wasn't they, a big deal for John. Uh, you, you got it all set up. <laughs> they were coming back into land, but they had to close the main runway because of the oil, the, the hydraulic fluid on the runway while they cleaned it. So they opened the second runway. They were using that for taking off as well. And as these guys are coming back in with this problem, they then closed that runway because someone took off and had a bird strike. <laughs> So then they had to sit there and hold for a little bit until the runway was cleared. Then they came back in and landed, taxied off. And when you lose the green system, you have to use the handle that I talked about earlier on the centre console to manually drop the gear, but the gear doors stay down as well. Yeah. And they don't hit the runway. Everyone goes, oh, they hit no, they're very, very close, but apparently they don't hit the runway. Yeah, we saw that um, once on a Pakistan 777, mm -hmm. one of the gear. Mm doors was still out and it touched down and I had thought it was going to hit the runway as well but it obviously didn't yeah. but on the air bus, it's only when they taxi past here that you realise how big them landing gear doors yeah, are, yeah, they're yeah. absolutely huge yeah they're not small, but um, anyway they got it sorted and uh, yeah it was uh, all good all good got a special livery rolling now by the way it's the sun express well just before that i'll quickly thank flying peacocks for the gifted membership a little while ago that was gifted to strody one two three one of our flights in fans thank you very much dude and andrew dickinson also gifting an airline live membership cheers guys thanks for supporting the channel today <laughs> if you want to support mm -hmm. us we recommend you gift memberships it does give back to the community as well and um, Barry Bidwell have a wonderful meal, by the way, on his anniversary, oh, he says. Mega, mate. Enjoy. Um, 
Sam saying two hydraulic failures equals two westerns. Well, I don't drink because Fezza gave me the hydraulic failures in the first place. He doesn't get any westerns. <laughs> Um, Mark Thorpe saying if you lose both engines at say 30,000 feet would you be able to get the aircraft on the ground well have a look on Airliners Lounge on the next Pilot Explains video and it'll tell you all about it but yes you, you will glide the, um, when you descend a jet aircraft it's effectively gliding you want the engines to go back to idle and um, the way that you work out how far you can glide is you take your height and your time to buy three so if you're at 33,000 feet you need 99 miles plus another 10 to slow down on a normal approach. When you're gliding with no engines, you, you, it goes down a bit quicker because you haven't got a little bit of thrust off the engines. But basically, take your height and time it by three. So if you're uh, 30,000 feet, you need 90 miles plus 10 to slow down. And wow. there are checklists for that as well. This 276 greased the runway there. Yeah, I've been treated again, guys. Two 767s on today's show, the second of which is in from uh, Paphos. And it looks like we're going to get another head-on shot here, guys. That was awesome. Or not. Oh, maybe not. Roll past. Spoke too soon, no? If you are enjoying today's show, uh, we'd really appreciate if you can give a uh, thumbs up, guys, on the video. Give it a like. Yeah, and if you're brand new to the channel, let us know in the chat. It's always interesting to see who's tuning in for the first time. Yeah, we'd love to welcome you in, guys. And it's quite cool, these evening shows, because we get a little bit of a different audience as well. Because I think people further west, you know, people in the Americas seem to have a better time tuning in but I think it's a bit more awkward for our Australian and New Zealand viewers let's have a look at this another classic airliner CF6 engines on this TUI 767 Owen Flemo tuning in for the first time. Wow. How did you get that mod badge then? <laughs> yeah. James saying, uh, first time viewing here from Cardiff. Nice one, dude. Welcome in. Hold on, let me sit up straight if you're taking a picture so I don't walk so long. <laughs> Cheers, Matty boy. Just had a message from Andrea Renshaw, one of our fans, and she's asking if I've been to Barcelona today. I'm like, no, I'm here with you guys. Let's <laughs> <laughs> have a listen in to this, shall we? Smith, same first time subscribers here, uh, watching an Avro way round the corner uh, while waiting for Tui Crew. Where's What's the Avro? <laughs> Which Avro are you talking about? The Avro uh, as in, in the RVP? Hmm. Let us know. And uh, Matt Nav, thank you very much for tuning in. Same evening folks from my place, which happens to be right underneath the approach path. Uh, for the inbounds to Nice. Nice one, dude. Some rather menacing looking clouds above. A380 is 30 minutes away, guys. Uh, so that's going to put us right on the edge of when we need to finish. Um, we'll do our best to bring it for you if we can. I think it'll be good, yeah. Uh, Matthew Kane's asking on long-haul flights, Manx to Dubai, how many pilots is it, two or three? Um, on that, it's just two. It's only seven hours. So, um, I mean, I do longer days than that if I go to Egypt. Um, but, again, there's a Pilot Explains video talking about flight time limitations and difference in crew rest and, how you know, sort of different crew. But, yeah, the further you go, the more pilots you need. 
Do you mean oh, to be sorry. Rest? Avril Way is in the road. Sorry, I thought you meant way round the corner. Ah. Avril Way, right, got you, got you. That makes more sense. And do you often, Mark, do a, I guess you call it a night stop, which is, I guess, where you have a night away from your home? Yeah, not that often. It's normally if there's if you miss a curfew at an airport like Paris or Baal or somewhere like that, mm. and you get stuck there, or if there's a tech problem. Um, but we, are, we our, our company has started doing Egypt night stops, so um, I, I've been hearing a few things about those. Seems quite, <laughs> quite fun. So, uh, so if you have a night stop, let's say you did miss a curfew at like Paris, you got stuck there. Yeah. How, like, who goes and, like, books the hotels, and does someone, like, even book you a taxi, or... Yeah, the company should do it all for you. Right, um, okay. you, you phone them up, you know, you know I mean, the last time, I, funnily enough, the last one I had at, at Barry's was a night stop, because we missed a curfew. Yeah. I got called out to do a, a delayed flight. We landed, and because they knew we were going to miss the curfew, they'd already booked the hotel, and the cab was outside waiting for us. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, you guys missed the Emirates with a new paint scheme on. Yeah, we saw it coming in, Craig. Um, but we were we were mad, mad busy this afternoon, and and with us being live this evening as well, um, we decided it probably wasn't worth the trip out. Unfortunately, yeah. for me, I mean, it's a nice scheme. It's a nice update. It's not massively wow, you know. And it's not massively different either. Yeah. Like, it is a touch different, obviously, but. It's not significant enough, I don't think, to kind of come out and do a bonus arrival show for it, really. Mm. Um, but we're definitely looking forward to seeing it on our shows. Yeah. Um, and uh, we'll definitely keep an eye on it. But, uh, yeah, today we were, we were just too busy. But, yeah, I think that was its first appearance at Manchester, which is crazy because it's been out for months now. And it was similar story with the, uh, the Dubai Expo, you know, the Smarties scheme. Uh, it was uh, it took a while before that made around to Manchester? It used to be a really good website uh, years ago that people would put up their own airline deliveries. You know, I'm going back 15 odd years now. And Ooh. people would sit at home on MS Paint or whatever and design their own liveries, and some of them were outstandingly good. Yeah, there's a few on, on Instagram that do it and yeah. they're really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, when EasyJet changed to that bandana thing, you know, I mean. <laughs> I could believe it. You know, I thought, you know, this is what these guys on the internet have come up with. And this lot have spent six months with the company and they've put all this bump fell, all this corporate speak about, you know, um, understanding the needs of the company and how they've matured from, you know, a fledging airline. It was a load of old corporate waffle and all you've done is paint an orange stripe on the top of it. I was like, you know, I mean, I mean kids were like two at the time. I mean, give them a paintbrush, they could have done better. It was just, yeah. Not they they used to have the old, uh, the phone number delivery, didn't they? Yeah. Back, back yeah. way back when. That's right, on the 7-3. Yeah, or the, the flying carrot as well. Yes. So the big one. Yeah, that was an old necker, that one. Cool. Reminds me of the old push by that. Squeaky, right? It's a bit squeaky. The gin and the old scoop. I'm guessing you're a fan of uh, retro schemes, though, uh, Mark. Mark? Yeah. Yeah, I mean... Um, yeah, when they're done well. The old BA ones were good, weren't they? The old BAC Bar- one was fantastic, wasn't it? The Landor one. Oh, on the 747. Yeah. Yeah. Just a bit of a, something different on the side of that there, why I just gave Matt a quick shout. So. Yeah, visit Greece. Little kind of picture. Special decal there. And a very big thank you uh, to Benjamin Stubbs, who's uh, tuning in and joined the show from Texas and has just become a brand new VIP. Oh, welcome. Thank you, mate. Appreciate that. Great stuff. I'll be in uh, your neck of the woods in uh, September, flying Singapore Airlines to Houston. That's going to be good fun. (laughs) Singapore have a, a bit of a retro scheme, too, that they've not really changed for a long time and looks really smart on the the super airliners of today nice Carol oh you enjoyed seeing that Carol EISRV on the reg Paul Smith good evening to you welcome in and uh, Joe saying, uh, hi guys, uh, we love watching the feeds, although we don't comment. 
However, my husband, Kev, would like to ask the pilot, uh, what's the most technically challenging airport to land at? <laughs> and uh, just before you answer, thank you very much, Joe, for getting involved in the chat. We'd love to see you in a bit more regularly if you feel like it. But thank you very much for watching the channel anyway as well and appreciate the, uh, the message. Uh, technically, the, 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 well, I mean, <laughs> probably that paro that Feza did in the sim in Bhutan, you know, up in the Himalayas, that's that's considered, the, I think, the most difficult one in the world. Yeah. Um, we have particular ones like Madeira, um, oh, where else? Gibraltar. Yeah. Yeah, we, ones where you have that special training. Innsbruck, probably the, the, the trickiest one we go to, um, but you need special training for that. For me, I don't know. I mean, like I said, this one in Adalaman the other day was uh, on the wrong one. We was interesting. And uh, two, one into Lanzagrotti can be interesting if you do the Arnav because it, it's all wiggly all over the shop. Yeah. Um, there's there's a few like that. Um, I can't think off the top of my head, actually. There's a, there's a few. We'll leave it with you. Yeah. We'll leave it with yeah. you. Thank you very much, Joe, as well, for your um, question. Grant Wiley's asking, where where did the EasyJet 757 lease come from a few years back? Um, Titan looked cool. Yeah, it, they had a few. Um, one was uh, an Australia's one that I used to fly. It was the first Iron Maiden um, tour plane. It was, uh, was Gojib was the rich. Off Skajula, India Bravo. It was actually a bit of an old knacker. And um, they were very pleased with the Australia. They did a great job. They also leased for Thomas Cook back then as well. Um, Titan leased them Zulu Alpha Pap Rex Ray for a while as well. But um, the Gojib one was actually in the EasyJet colours for a while. It was down at Gatwick. And they also had an Air Finland one, Osco Hotel Alpha Fox Rock Juliet for a while, and then Fox India as well for a little bit. I think they had one off Tag Aviation as well for a little while. Yeah, I put a picture up of uh, Gojib on the VIP chat um, just after they painted it. I flew it down to Djibouti just after Christmas on 2007, I think it was. Uh, it was just before the first Iron Maiden tour, and uh, that was one of my last flights with them. But that then went off later that year to do the first tour. I was talking to Matt about it because we were talking about the different engine cow colours on the 767. He was trying to work out what airline they'd nicked it from, and... That goji was down in Chambly just before, about a week, I think, before they start the Iron Maiden tour. And someone drove a set of steps into the back of the wing and knackered the aileron. So they had to borrow one from someone in Amsterdam. So they got this old Antonov four-engine turboprop thing to come in with this aileron and change it in Chambry. And Bruce Dickinson apparently was doing his nut because his tour was about to be ruined, you know, by oh, not gosh. having a plane. And then they got it fixed quickly and got it in the air, but... Planes aren't the things you want to be fixing quickly, either. No, no. Not a week before World Tour. Yeah, if, uh, online devil saying Ed Force One. Yeah, that was the first. Yeah. It was, uh, Ojib was the first one. Then they used one of the STR Reg ones um, after that, because Ojib was a bit of an old knacker. Um, he had a few problems with it. it he used to have a problem. The APU kept failing all the time. Really? And I remember being in um, Freetown, Sierra Leone, about to fly back. And they were sitting on the apron. They'd been sitting there for a couple of hours. Had to keep one engine running because they burned the start route on the APU. So they had to shut down one engine, get the passengers off, start that engine up, shut the other one down, get the bags off, get the bags on, start that engine up, shut the other one down, get the passengers How much back extra on. Extra fuel. That oh would be yeah, easy. yeah. Now the RB two elevens aren't known for being, uh, you know, it was a lot more than running an APU. We got it going in the air because we had to go over to Monrovia and, and drop off and pick up there as well before we flew back to Gatwick. And we managed to air start the APU in the air, but uh, we didn't trust it enough. And they're going, oh, there's an air start unit on the ground in Monrovia, and it had just come out of Civil War. This is back in 2007, 2006. And we're like, do we really, really want to trust? You know, the Foreign Office advice was do not go there under any circumstances. Yeah. And we're like, do we really want to trust that their air start unit is going to work? <laughs> no. So we just did the old shut you down, start you up That's game again. That's not uh, a place you want to, an overnight no. stop, is it? No. Flebo said he's off now to board the delayed Luke at Island Man flight. Mm, there you go. He's uh, doing a shift over at his uh, local airport. Cheers for stopping in, mate. Scouse land. We are in the last sort of... Yeah, still 25 minutes away, that A380, you know, Andy. Where is it? It's only just over London. Yeah. In the new 
screaming. <laughs> <laughs> I think we might be in a bit of trouble if it did like a uh, an orbit or you know putting a yeah. hold or whatever because that can add a few minutes sometimes. But uh, before that, there is a Jet Two Seven Five from Zakynthos, which is over the Midlands. Nice. Um, yeah, we are on a time constraint chat. Um, the RVP closes at eight PM. And obviously, the guys have already worked pretty late to late PM. We don't want to be the ones who are making them wait around any longer because we've not packed up yet. So we do like to be nice and prompt. Uh, we'll keep an eye on the 380. It is looking like at this moment in time, it may arrive a little bit too late for us. Um, but let's let's see how we get on. Let's see how we get on. Uh Mark, I think you already know, don't you, that uh, Loopy, one of our mods, used to... I've got his book. You've got his book. I've got his book. It's about, fantastic. Yeah. yeah. yeah he, he's got his own book yeah. where he used to... Well, I guess you know, he used to be a roadie for Iron Maiden. Yeah. Yeah, because um, Malky's saying that the uh, the, bear, the bear on uh, Nico's drum kit on Iron Maiden, it, we, he, it was him who threw it at him. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Malky's book's fantastic. Yeah, sorry, Loopy's book's fantastic. But yeah. yeah, it was good. Yeah. Used to be my favourite back in you know back years ago. Oh yeah, love a bit. Used to love a bit of Maiden. And you were flying for Astraeus when they had the yeah the Iron Maiden uh, yeah. aircraft. Yeah, I got the flight just before it went on the tour. I did think about putting in to do the tour, but I was I left to come to my current airline, so uh, it never happened. Um, the Shore Wings in from Dusseldorf. Fucking rather, by, rather plain. It's got a yeah Avion a, Express operating that flight. Yeah, Malt, uh, Maltese Reg. Yeah, Matt, you can you can back up now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Matt Nav's asking, have I been into Nice? Yes, lots. Approaching to runway for zero four left. Yeah, it's um, you you do this funny arrival where you go around this this out. Prop is that the one where you come in and you do the left hand turn round the bay and then uh, you, down. you do a, you, you come round you come round the outcrop and then you sort of head towards a VOR and then you do a right hand turn line up the runway on two two you come in round the bay more right it's two two that I've done in the sim you, you fly towards it and then you come in yeah like that you've round. got to cut it. there was um, someone made a right mess of it recently I can't remember what airline it was um, but they made a right mess of it and they ended end up over the town. You know, not even lined up with a runway at all. So, um, yeah, it's. Um, yeah, if you do want to get to Luffy's book, guys, uh, Matt has placed a link for that in the chat for you. I was going to say, it's a good book. Really uh, good. I've got mine on the display cabinet at home. I love it. Yeah, anyone who's into Iron Maiden or wants to buy a gift for somebody who is into Iron Maiden, it's definitely worth it. Yeah, an awesome, an awesome book. Another Ryanair 7-3 on the uh, touchdown at the moment. 2-3 right. Take care, Matt. Thanks for tuning in, mate. And uh, good to hear that at least your mum's uh, making some decent progress, mate. Thank you very much for tuning in. It's Ryanair on the roll is uh, in from Dublin. Biggest city in Ireland, that. There you go. Keeps Dublin and Dublin inside. <laughs> I think we've seen her depart earlier on, actually. It's only a short route there and back. Eurowings A320, though, least aircraft. We see quite a lot of these these days, of, like, these kind of half-plane leased mm. aircraft to fulfil capacity. Obviously, coming out of the pandemic, we've had a lot of airlines cutting back their fleet size. And often they'll come with uh, crew as well to fly the planes, so you're also fulfilling a uh, possible pilot shortage in your airline as well. Some pretty nasty looking clouds about though. But uh, I, I couldn't imagine that the aircraft that are leasing are going to be cheap. Because it certainly seems like they're in demand. But uh, Jet 2 always seems to get their hands on the, the A330s every summer. See, maybe that's another one for you, one of your explains videos. Um, 
yeah. the difference between wet lease, dry lease, and you know whether you have crew or whether you, or, you know, what you're leasing. Yeah, that's a good one. Huh? That's a good one. Too. Yeah, Andy explains. I've got like a, a notes thing on my phone. I always write down new ideas for videos. And like I said, one slightly ambitious one would be like what happened to Thomas Cook, and uh, I think more recent relevancy would be what happened to Flyby, because I think that's a little bit more nuanced to it because it happened twice, <laughs> and I feel like both times I kind of understand why it happened. I mean, the first time was just you know a fate it was heading towards for a while, uh, and the second time round was was kind of. They, they missed the mark on pricing and didn't spend on advertising and and, mm-hmm. and by then had lost their uh, their slots to airlines like um, Logan Air. Yeah, had lost all the really good earner ones, hadn't they? Yeah, I remember mm-hmm. that the most the busiest one they had back in the day was Manchester to Belfast City. Yeah. And I think these days uh, Air Lingus flies that. I think uh, EasyJet are doing it soon as well. Oh, oh the city airport as well? Yeah, I think they, they plan on doing a W pattern with, out of Luton. Ah. They go Luton City, city here, back yeah. to city, back to Luton. Yeah, oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, and obviously EasyJet for a long time have also done the uh, is it Aldergrove uh, International Airport there in, in Belfast. Can you guys do an evening show? Yeah, we may look at doing Project N at some point. If we do, we will go live at the same time. We will let you know. That's one that's been on my list for a while. Here goes the nice pair of Wookiees, Helvetic and Brea E2. Someone in the chat's asking what happened to Dan Air. Well, hopefully, it might have an ex Dan Air pilot on podcast talk, telling you what happened down here uh-huh. but yeah they went bust years ago and he's yeah. um, he's written a book as well he was saying that in, in um, a good friend of his was the FO on the 727 that went in the side of the, the mountain at Tenerife but yeah he's a fascinating guy a key guy on the channel for uh, for those videos I think uh, yeah the, the, if you were to do that series there's a lot of airlines you could talk about even like Astraeus right and yeah, I suppose we've got someone who's, who knows a bit about that airline. Well, oh, I don't know. I can ask <laughs> someone. Yeah, now it, I'm sure it's this E2. It's, it's, I can't remember if it's the E2 or the E2, A220, but there's one of them. When, they, when it comes into land, your primary flight display, your artificial horizon, changes from the green and the blue and actually shows you the runway. Ooh. It's, I've seen a video of it. Um, it it's really weird. But I, I don't know whether it's... I couldn't tell from the video whether it was a computer-generated runway coming up towards you or it was actually a camera on the nose that was looking down at it. Oh, yeah. So this is an A... Oh, no, it's not. Sorry. Is this a... That's a Scandinavian Neo, isn't it? It is in a nice new scheme. I have got my camera ready. Nice. Yeah, the, I mean, the A220s, they, they are pretty astonishing the tech on that and likewise to the the A350 as well I don't know a lot a lot about the A330 Neos they, they're pretty modern though as well but I think they're very similar to the the 300 and 200 series of the A330s yeah, the flight deck's identical here yeah. yeah but like we said before here and I've had this confirmed from someone I know who works for Airbus that the 330 Neo is more efficient than the 350 it is wow and that's great uh, yeah they took all the um, all the tweaks they put on the 350 and put it on the 330, uh, 330 Neo so uh, yeah it's uh, yeah it's aircraft in from Copenhagen cheers Mike for the info and a brand new aircraft as well yeah uh, very pretty isn't it that. This is from uh, September 2022, so definitely a, uh, a new one. I'm not sure if we've caught this on the stream so far, chat, but... Yeah, I'm not so. sure. She's very pretty, though. Yeah, it is the E2 with the uh, PFD changing to the runway. I've just looked it up. It's 
quite common these Scandinavian aircraft have Irish regis as well nice colour scheme isn't it ok oh. looking at the map guys we will get the A380 um, we'll get it touching down and rolling out but then we will need to wrap the show up so we're not going to stick around and watch it taxi all the way in I think we can just about hold on for it to touch down awesome and then we'll uh, get ourselves out of here on time so these lads can go home and have some tea <laughs> again some 10 out of 10s in the chat for the RVP late opening it's something we like to advertise a lot on the channel I know me and Matt really enjoy our photography here at this time of the day and certainly wouldn't be possible if they weren't willing to uh, stay late for us it's completely different today isn't it from the last it is, three yeah. uh, evening shows that we did where they've all been stunning sunshine over the evening. Yeah, I made a nice change, actually. Some pretty crazy cloud formations as well that are acting as nice backdrops for the aircraft as well. Yeah, we did get drenched earlier on. Um, heavy rain on the start of the show, but it was actually forecast to rain right through till 7pm, I think. But yeah. looking at BBC weather, and it's been pretty all right the last sort of two hours. Um. But it was only like the first hour we got drenched. Thanks to everyone who's supported the channel during today's stream. We really appreciate it. And thanks for those getting involved in the chat and smashing the like button as well. And uh, we're going to be back live with you again on uh, Saturday this week. Not Sunday, guys. There is no Sunday show this week. We are going to be live on Saturday instead. And for those who can only really watch on Sunday, well, at least you can watch it back, so... A bit of a... We're switching it up again on this weekend. So stay tuned. We won't be here at Manchester, put it that way. So, yeah, tune in from roughly the same time on Saturday, although it might be a little bit later. Uh, but uh, that depends on what time things are happening on the day. My wallet got dispatched today. Awesome, Matthew. How long until the A380 lasts? Uh, about 10 minutes, I think. Not long at all, so stay tuned for that. Um, I don't think Henry's on tomorrow, no. I will check in with him. Yeah, I don't think so, though. Uh, he has a big trip every year for his birthday, and uh, that's what he's currently on at the moment. He's down in the Bahamas. All right for some, isn't it? <laughs> that will be postcard, yeah? I know. Uh, <laughs> Actually, I'm still waiting on one from Lanzarote from uh, someone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he, uh, they must be roasted over the, in the Bahamas at the moment. Yeah, Peter, you should definitely come over, mate. Maybe yeah. come over for the, uh, the task fair, Peter. That'd be good. Come down mm. and, uh, and meet us all. I drove down from Geordie Land today. It took me six hours. So you six can normally hours. do it quicker than that. <laughs> that is crazy, mate. Was it just literally not moving at all? Or? Oh, it's just a mess. Absolute mess. I don't know. What. And the, the stupid thing is, you know, there was all these ambulances going down, and then we're getting past sort of Lancaster way, and I can see on the map it's like half a mile ahead, and then suddenly all the traffic moves, and when we went past where the point was, there was nothing there. There wasn't anything oh. there. So yeah. I don't know what had gone on, but yeah. We get, um, on the M60, I've noticed that them smart motorways kick off for no reason a lot these days. Mm. Like here in the UK, we have these new smart motorways which change the speed limit based on various whatevers are happening. But like, it'll take you down to like forty miles an hour, and then <laughs> nothing's there. Nothing's happened. Yeah. You just, I, I did once coming back, going back home after a shift. It's two o'clock in the morning, yeah. and I went across. The, was it the sixty-two towards the M1? Yeah. And it had a twenty mile an hour speed limit. Report of pedestrians for the entire stretch. Oh. And there's people who are ignoring it. And the old gantry cameras are going off like Christmas lights. Oh my god! Twenty mile an hour all the way. There was no one there. Oh. There was nothing there. Yeah, I think and I that's the thing with those is they they closed down a lot of the motorway um, around the Trafford Centre for like three years. And I remember in work just how a nightmare the traffic was. God, that must be awful. And he said, "Oh, don't worry, guys. Like when the smart motorways in, all this traffic is going to be like managed. It's going to keep moving." And mate, them same queues are there the same yeah. now as they ever were. Yeah. And as you get closer to the traffic centre, it doesn't matter whether it's two o'clock in the afternoon, seven o'clock at night. The queue is there, and yeah. it's, which proves to me it's obviously a fault with the junctions and the traffic joining, not the motorway. And 
all it seems to have done is just giving them a load of speed cameras to make mm. Dosh on, isn't it? Yeah. Well, even on the 56, and normally it's 60, you know, and sometimes there's some stupid excuse, I'll report for this, report that. You never see it. Today I've come along there at 70. You know, it's raining, there's, it's quite busy, and there's no speed limit. I'm like, oh, whatever. Mad, isn't it? Yep. Um, yeah. When it's Smith. a task fair as well, just say, uh, it's the 22nd of July, uh, Pete. 22nd of July, mate. Uh, that's a Saturday. We're going to be here from 10 a.m. till usually around 3 p.m., something like that, under the wings of Concord, with loads of merchandise, loads of community members. Captain Mark's going to be there. Yay. Niels is going to be there. Niels is going to be there. And yeah. maybe Project Net will be there as well, guys. Maybe. Marcus Smith's asking, uh, thanks for all the work you do on and behind the screen. Can you please reassure my wife, Mark, that she will be absolutely flying, flying in two weeks, please. She will be absolutely fine flying in two weeks, young Marcus. And uh, again, go back on the lounge or early airlines live. You've got a video of me telling you the eight big fears of flying and why you don't need to worry about them. And uh, if it was more than two weeks, I'd say come along in person to the SAS fair on 22nd of July and I'll tell her face to face that she'll be fine. Yeah, and I did that with Johanna and a couple other people uh, last week. There was one guy he he hasn't flown in years, and his daughter has. And he said, "I'm I've watched your video, and I'm going to have my first flight in years after watching it." So that's Mate, good. That's that's the sort of thing I was talking about the other day. It's videos like that that make all the time and the effort just just work worthwhile, you know. Because so many people have commented on that, saying, "Oh, thanks, you've helped me sort this out." and I've been able to go fly in again, and that's 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 all that all that matters in it, really. Uh, looking at the A380, it is uh, just about to make a right turn on the downwind leg, so I'd say another five minutes, ten minutes max before we see that touchdown. That uh, Embry is off nice and early, isn't he? It's a yeah. shame. I was hoping he would come here because you know how you see how the winglets go on 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 the end, how they like point out They're like that. Massive, it's aren't like they? he's shrugging his shoulders, like I don't know. <laughs> yeah, every time I see it, I think I don't know. <laughs> They're so big, them, uh, yeah. them winglets on those things. They are. We love them, though. The, it's a 175, isn't it, this Embraer? Did you uh, did you see some bloke who travels a lot, Dornier video yeah. in the VIP lounge? Yeah, because I, 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 it normally parks like up it. over there. You know, I see it quite regularly because there's one that's OYNCL, Newcastle Ridge. You know, yeah. I see them flying around, but... I had to do a bit of reading up on him because uh, I had a friend, uh, actually it was a lad I talked to fly years ago. Um, he went, worked, I think it was a Scott Airways down at London City on the Dornier and he got his command there. So that was quite, he's a jet too now. But um, I had to read up on this Dornier jet and, you know, the Pratt and Whitney engines and all of that. But it's, it's a funky <laughs> little thing, isn't it? It is. It's yeah. uh, definitely a bit, uh, definitely a bit scooter for me. <laughs> Ring, ding, 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 He's hey, a, how he's, you doing, Keith? How are you doing, Keith is the guy, guys. He's a Guess smashing lad, yeah. In the chat for Keith. He's a great lad, yeah. He's, uh, he's godfather at my oldest. He's a smashing man. He's, he's is a that he's got a triple something? No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, no I, 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 I did some of his flying lessons years ago, and we've uh, we've been mates ever since. He's a, he's a smashing lad. Yeah, he's retiring soon, the lucky devil. Well, if you ever retire in that triple seven sim, give me a shout, Keith. <laughs> All right, I've got a garage I can find for it. <laughs> what have we got here then? This is the 7.5 that I was talking about earlier on. So that means we're not long away from the A380 to wrap up today's show. I hope you've enjoyed it, guys. We've had a great evening. It's been awesome. Oh, they're going to use them strong mechanical brakes to, to get her off. You oh. can do it. <laughs> Marcus is saying if they have a wave during the task fair, which is a shame. If they're often around the RVP. If they see me, yes, please come and say hello. I'd uh, love to have a chat with you. love to meet you. Um, you know me, uh, we'll have a natter. You know me pop into the RVP after your flights, don't you? Yeah, if I'm on early, I'll pop in and say hello and, and feed Dakota sweets to make a gold hyper. <laughs> yeah, appreciate that. Yeah, that's right. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, come and see us, mate. Good to see you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Have a listen in to that 7-5, shall we? Can't 
see the wrinkles on that one very well, can you? No, it's mainly the dot com ones, schemes. Yeah. You can see it a lot more on. Mm. Matthew Kane's asking, do I get free flights off my company when I go on holiday? <laughs> Got to have leave <laughs> to go on holiday. <laughs> no, I don't, mate. Not at all. Uh, Andrew tell. Dickinson, thank you very much for the six months of Airliners Live membership saying, uh, Captain Martin, not including your own, who is the best carrier you've flown with uh, and why? And uh, also a very warm welcome to uh, Aya Turner as well. Great to see you and tuning in from Turkey. Best airliner? Well, I don't know because I've only, I've only flown on BA, um, Astraeus, EasyJet and Ghana Airways so uh, I don't know I don't don't, don't know I can't get any, you, get, you never get any time off so you never get to go on holiday so you never really get to go <laughs> anywhere that was the so uh, the BA flight then did you go oh it used to well it was on the uh, it was years ago we used to do we've been on I was on the 73 the first one was 75 200 London Newcastle and I used to do that hot quite regularly because I used to live down in London family in the north east friends in the north east so it was either on a 7.5, a th- the early 3.20, 100s and the 200s, and the 7.3, 400s. Um, but yeah, that, that was years ago. And then I did a, a, a position in flight for Australia years ago, flying on a 3.20, which was fine. I all went to Turkey. It's but yeah, it's fine. They still have the shuttle service at Newcastle. Dude, I think they do, don't they? Yeah, yeah they do yeah. about five or six a day out of there. Wow. Yeah. The uh, Emirates A380 is now established on the uh, ILS, uh, and it's number two to land behind a TUI aircraft, which you can see in shot now, uh, arriving from Tenerife. That left three hours, uh, well, it's just ticked over to four hours exactly that left um, the uh, 737-800, and uh, the Emirates A380 just completing a seven-hour and seven-minute flight for today. It's good because uh, the last Wednesday show, a, lo- a lot of these aircraft got held up, didn't they? I think the A380 did an orbit. Mm-hmm. There was a 75 or a 76 that did an orbit too. We ended up holding on for, but getting a, getting the king straight in is a uh, is nice for a change. Keep an eye on the approach path as well, because we'll see it break through those clouds at some point. Great plane to end on as well. I'm tempted to just have my camera out the window in case it leaves like a big <laughs> wisp, you know, as it they do that as sometimes. it comes through. Yeah, they're pretty, they don't last very long. They're pretty thick these clouds. Though. Knife. <laughs> yeah, they are pretty thick these clouds. So I'm not holding my breath for that. But usually about there in the middle of the shot, we'll uh, see the aircraft breaking through. Come on. Call me, call me down. How many feet? There it is. Oh, there you go. There it is. Not quite as uh, spectacular. I think the clouds are a bit too thick. That one that was just passing in front of it there would uh, would have been perfect. Yeah, it would have. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Through, don't know. That cloud was a little bit further to the left. But the wind is blowing the other way. Tell you what, though, Andy, it's moving a little bit slowly. You never know. We might get lucky. Oh, no, I don't think so. No. <laughs> never mind. Great view, though. It's kind of moved out the way to give us a an awesome view of the approach of the biggest passenger aircraft on the planet. Wrapping up an awesome show today. They've actually got a aircraft departing at the moment too. Looks like a Ryanair. Probably a great time to thank Mr. Mark as well for coming on today. Thank you, mate. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's been great. Always fun. And there it is, folks, your final arrival for today. Don't forget to smash those like buttons as well if you've not done so already. Cheers, guys. If we get to next to land. Nice, smooth approach by the looks of it. Hey, Enhanced 91, welcome in. It's getting a bit chilly up here now as well. See that engine jelly there.
king of the skies always manages to find pockets of water over there what a great show that was though absolutely Mark thanks again mate no worries nice cheers to for getting involved thanks for having us I'm sure we'll be uh, having you filming again very soon next few weeks probably no doubt but uh, keep an eye on the channel guys uh, for more of Mark's content on our exclusive Pilot Explains series um, I hope you guys enjoyed having Mark on thanks for all your questions in the chat really does uh, make for an informative and interesting show we've certainly learned a lot as well um, again we're going to be back live on Saturday this week not Sunday so don't forget guys we are live on Saturday uh, well thank you very much for all your support getting involved in the chat the crazy amount of merch orders we've had since uh, <laughs> since we've been live yep and uh, yes again we will see you on Saturday cheers for Mr. Smith as well chilling hanging out taking some pickies make sure you check him out 0161 Avgi on Instagram but, uh, that's going to wrap us up folks for today my name's Martin we've had Andy up on the camera smashing it thank you and uh, we'll see you on Saturday Saturday guys take care <laughs> I need I, I, I need to show up bye <laughs> <laughs> see ya see ya <laughs>